the final. Now, one of the CFL's best ever takes on his biggest challenge, turning the Birmingham Barracudas into winners. Matt Donegan missed Birmingham's first two games, but the Barracuda didn't seem to mind, at least not in their first ever CFL contest, as they upset the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Game two, it did not go as smooth. Playing their second game in five days, the Barracudas were mauled by the Ticats. The win over Birmingham improved the Tiger Cats to 2-0, and, oh, and now they are the beasts of the Northeast. Led by a couple of former members of the Las Vegas Posse, quarterback Anthony Cavill and running back Kalen Hall. These new-look cats are roaring again, hoping to spoil Birmingham's home opener. CFL Live. Tonight's game from Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama. The Hamilton Tiger Cats versus the Birmingham Barracudas. Good evening and welcome to the CFL Live on TSN. I'm Darren Detition. Glad you could join us this evening for the home opener of the Birmingham Barracudas, the first ever regular season CFL game to be played in Alabama. It seems rather strange to utter those words, but also very exciting as the Canadian Football League continues its expansion push. And when you're building an expansion team, it all starts at the quarterbacking position. And the Barracudas have one of the very best in Matt Dunnigan. And he is our key matchup. After missing the first two games on the road due to a broken finger, Dunny returns to the starting lineup statistically. His numbers are very impressive. He's been to the Grey Cup five times, and with a good season, he will hit the 40,000-yard mark in passing this year. I mean, come on. He tossed for 713 yards in one game last year. And while the stats don't lie, you can't measure his determination to win and his ability to lead. His only hindrance has been his health. Let's hope he has a good year this year. Tonight, he's going to have his work cut out from the Hamilton Ticats, playing very, very well with Anthony Cavillo off to a fine start. With their thoughts on the tabbies in tonight's game, let's go to Gord Miller and Glenn Suter. Darren, we've come to the football capital of the South where the Hamilton Ticats are surprisingly enough looking to run their record to 3-0 in the season. And Glenn, as they do, their offense is keyed by a couple of guys who were great for the Las Vegas Posse last year. That's right. At quarterback, they have Anthony Cavillo. This is the youngest quarterback in the CFL at 22 years old, but he's a great one already. He can read defenses, and if things break down, he has the athletic ability to improvise. Also, they have Kalen Hall, and I felt last year when we played him, this guy would become one of the best running backs in the CFL. He's got great hands coming out of the backfield, and when he gets in the open field, he'll make you miss. So the curtain goes up on a new franchise in the Canadian Football League at home, and the weather was a factor last night in Memphis. It won't be as much of a factor here tonight. The temperature is only 100 degrees. It's positively mild, but there is a thunderstorm warning in the area. There. Thanks very much, guys. On to the game story, obviously. First and foremost is the return of Matt Dunnigan. Just how effective will he be? Anthony Cavillo has been hot. Can Birmingham shut him down? His biggest weapons are Kalen Hall and Earl Winfield. Look for them to get the ball a lot in the Ticats defense. Can it contain Dunnigan and his attack? Meanwhile, in San Antonio, the Texans and the Baltimore Stallions are ramping up their home-and-home -home series as well. The Stallions kicked them in game one as Texans defensive end James King called the 50-24 to loss embarrassing. We will update you on that game. And at the halftime, we will take you to San Antonio for all of the action. Let's go back to the game now as it is time to kick off as we join Gord and Glenn. Thanks very much, Darren, and welcome to steamy Birmingham. And you see the downtown area a few miles from Legion Field here in Birmingham, a beautiful facility. This stadium is best known as being the site of the annual Alabama-Auburn game, which draws fans from across the state here and is a huge event in this state every year. You see Don Southern, who played in the odd big game himself when he played for Woody Hayes at Ohio State in his first full season as the head coach of the Hamilton Ticats. He took over for them last August. And Jack Pardee, a man who's coached in the World Football League, the USFL, the NFL, and now the Canadian Football League, not to mention U.S. College as well, the head man for the Birmingham Barracudas. And the 
Cudas won the toss. They deferred their choice to the second half, and so the Hamilton Ticats will receive. Franco Grilla is back to kick off for the Birmingham Barracudas in their teal and black home uniforms. And like the Toronto Argonauts and the Memphis Mad Dogs, they have their logo on the front of the uniforms. You see the small numbers on the front. Hamilton Ticats with a 2-0 record in their white road uniforms as the CFL is set to arrive in the football capital of the South. What? what a facility this is too, Gord. You just look around. I mean, you can feel the atmosphere in this building, and they have new turf in there. They used to have artificial turf. Now it's natural grass. Said it cost $2 million to put in, but is it ever worth its beautiful grass field? This uh, stadium is about a two-hour drive from Atlanta, and next year, Legion Field will be the site of Olympic soccer. And so that's the reason the natural surface has been put in. It's actually prescription athletic turf. There's actually a plastic shield about three inches underneath the grass, and that's what helps it heal so quickly. CFL Commissioner Larry Smith is on hand as well for the first home game for the Birmingham Barracudas. He's been a busy man on the road the first three weeks of the season, and he will be in San Antonio next week as well to check out how the Texans are doing in the Alamo Dome. We've had a slight delay before we get things underway here. I believe uh, one of the 22nd clocks is not operative, so they'll try to get that up and working. And as they do, we'll get set for the arrival of the Canadian Football League in Alabama. Do you ever think you'd see it, Glenn? No, I didn't. But, you know, when we were walking in, we were talking about last night in Memphis and here in Birmingham, we're starting to get feel like there's an atmosphere happening. You talk to some of the people in the city, and they're starting to get excited about the game and the CFL. They said they're just seeing highlights here and there, but they say it looks pretty exciting. So they're getting excited here. Franco Grilla is set now to kick it off. And back deep to receive two first-year players for the Ticats, Andrew Brigg and Sam Rogers. It's a short kickoff, bouncing down at the 15-yard line, and the CFL has arrived in Alabama. It's Greg who gets across the 25, and out to the 28-yard line, a 60-yard kickoff, and a return of 12. Well, we talked about him in the opening, the youngest starting quarterback in the Canadian Football League, 22-year-old Anthony Cavillo, who played last year for the Las Vegas Posse. So far this year, leads the league with 648 passing yards and five touchdowns. And his Hamilton offense includes a former teammate with the Las Vegas Posse. As you take a look at the front line for the Ticats, Dale Sanderson in his 11th year, played college football not far from here at the University of Tennessee. And Kalen Hall, number 24, a man to watch out of the backfield, leads the CFL in yards from the line of scrimmage. And on first down, Cavillo to throw. Quickly, he does to Earl Winfield. That pass very nearly picked off by Fernando Thomas. But Earl Winfield, who had a big week last week, catching his 70th career touchdown pass, Comes up with the catch and a pickup of five. How about this Hamilton offense? They lead the league in touchdown passes with five. They they average 34 points a game, which also leads the league. And then you look on their defense, and they're the stingiest defense in the league with averaging only 14 points a game so far. Cavillo and company put up 493 yards in total offense last week as Mike Curran came off the bench as well. And Cavillo on second and five. Has a man wide open. It's Lee Knight over the middle, and Knight close to midfield brought down at the 54-yard line. And Lee Knight came into this game with three catches for 96 yards. He was averaging 32 yards a catch coming into this game, and that won't hurt his average. It's a good job by Cavill reading the defense. He sees the zone, and when you get the zone, the longer you hold the ball, the more things open up. Knight found the hole right in the middle of the zone. Nice gain for Knight. And a gain of 22 yards brings him just shy of midfield, but it's a first down for the Hamilton Ticats. And Lee Knight, what an amazing year he's having so far. He's got four catches for 118 yards. And Ken Lazarek is now talking it over with one of the other officials, Art McAvoy. And I believe there's a roster problem with one of the Birmingham Barracudas. They had to make some last-minute changes. Junior Thurman, who we know well from the Canadian Football League, was not able to play in this football game, so a player was added late, Tommy Oates, off their practice roster. So Jack Pardee and company forced to make a last-minute shift. And yes, the clock is not working here in Birmingham. So that's the other problem we've got is Ken Lazarek will now go over and talk to the sideline officials. And we saw the same thing last night. So they'll keep the time on the sideline, as they always do. And as soon as they now they've got the scoreboard clock operating down to 13.35. So we should be able to get things underway. Of course, the timekeeping is different in the Canadian Football League as opposed to U.S. football. One thing, of course, the 22nd clock is different, and when the clock starts is different, so they've had little classes for the offense.
off field officials at all the U.S. cities. Yeah, they'll have to go through a learning process. The big one is the 20 second difference. In the NFL, of course, there's 40 seconds between plays, and here in the CFL, things move a little faster. Only 20 seconds between plays. So the clock is back and operating, and the Thai Cats have it first and 10 on their own side of midfield at the Hamilton 54. And for the first time, Cabillo goes to the shotgun. And hands it off to Kalen Hall. Hall got away from the first man, but couldn't get by the second. He picks up three yards on the play as he's brought down by Donovan Gans, number 49, a first-year player out of Texas A&M Kingsville. And the defense, as the starting line is brought to you by Mr. Sub, fresh thinking is what we are. And you'll see some familiar names. And, of course, Angelo Snipes, number 91, has been a major player in the Canadian Football League in his five-year career. Anthony Drawhorn, number seven, plays safety for the Birmingham Barracuda. On second and seven, Cavillo with lots of time, delivers to the sidelines and completes it out there to Manny Hazard, number 81. And Hazard, who was in the camp of the Birmingham Barracudas, but was released after training camp as a first down for the Ticats. He gets down to the 40-yard line in the gate of 10. And again, Birmingham going with the zone defense, and Hazard's going to run out and up on the sideline. It all starts with great time for Cavillo, though, in the pocket. He goes out and up, and then he sits down in the hole in front of the deep defender. Nice, A nice read there by Hazard. And good early ball movement by the Hamilton Ticats, who enter this game with the best offense in the CFL. Cavillo with the fake to Hall, rolling out, dumps it underneath for Lee Knight. And Knight was unable to elude the grasp of linebacker Donovan Gans, who read that play, but still for Knight, it's a pickup of about eight yards. Well, nice fake there by Cavill. He pulled Sean Peoples in from the rush end position way inside. He's on the left of your screen, and with the play action fake, you'll see Peoples get way inside, loses containment. That allowed Cavill outside and then to dump it to Knight. They spot it as a game of seven. It brings up second and three. Kalen Hall is the lone back. He takes the handoff. Big hole for Hall, who gets across the 30-yard line and down to the 28. He'll have a first down for the Hamilton Ticats. And Kalen Hall, who played his college football at BYU, played in Vegas last year. As you mentioned, played in just two games, but he averaged 7.9 yards a carry. Boy, this guy, when I saw him, we were playing against him, and we could not tackle him in the open field. He had about 200 yards against us. Then he got hurt and missed the rest of the season. On first down, three receivers to the near side. Cavillo now with the pump fake, looking for Winfield in the end zone, and it's broken up by Fernando Thomas. And Earl Winfield is looking to move up another notch on the CFL's all-time touchdown list. Very nearly had one there. What a start for the season for Earl Winfield. 12 catches for 227 yards already in 1995, and he really should have had this one. Coaches would tell him on the sideline, listen, Earl, you got to stick a fork in this one because, look, he's got it down the sideline and just bounces right off his chest. And good job there on the coverage right in the hip pocket, but that one was one that Earl Winfield definitely should have caught. Fernando Thomas stayed on the hip and stayed with him. First incompletion for Cavill. Now on second down, lots of time over the middle, and it bounces out of the hands of Winfield receiver was open after two straight incompletions Anthony Cavill will leave the field and I believe we'll have a field goal try from Paul Osbaldiston so Winfield had a big week last week with a couple of drops here although that one was low and the ball spotted at the 28 yard line this will be a 35 yard field goal attempt for Paul Osbaldiston who is six for eight on the year this is the first time he's tried one from 30 to 39 yards. Uh, Ballison puts it up and good. And the Hamilton Ticats score on their first possession as Paulus Ballison puts them on the board and in the heat in Birmingham. Jack Pardee's team is down by three. Recently, Subway asked us, Bucky and Vinny, to review their turkey and bacon deluxe. So we decided to do a little research. This is where turkey is. Where's the bacon? So what do we think? It's great. We got nice seasoned turkey with all the trimming. A fresh baked bread topped with slices of real bacon. That's what makes it deluxe. Hey, look, even brought napkins. <laughs> Subway, what a sandwich. Well, I shopped around a lot, and uh, the Honda Accord was one of the cars that I looked at, but I fell in love with the Ford Contour because uh, it's exhilarating to drive. 
when I say to my family and friends, ooh, it's got a Duratec engine, everybody's like, oh, really? The best kind of driving would be bright sunshine to somewhere fun. With the contour, it's like, oh, it's only an hour and a half. The CFL live on TSN. Brought to you by Pepsi. Pepsi reminds you to be young, have fun, drink Pepsi. And by Bell Advantage Long Distance Services from the Alliance of Canada's only full service telecommunications companies. Anthony Cavillo with an impressive opening drive. Another game being played tonight features Baltimore at San Antonio. For an update, let's go back to CFL Control and Darren. Gord, what a wild game in San Antonio. Pringle's off and running. Looks like he's going to score a very large major until he gets tackled from behind. He fumbles. Shannon Culver comes in. He recovers seven to nothing for the Stallions. Mm, and here, Matt Dunnigan on his first play to Birmingham Barracuda gets it up to Marcus Grant on the receiver screen. And a play reminiscent of one that Terry Greer used to run for the Toronto Argonauts is run by the Birmingham Barracudas. And Matt Dunnigan, who is climbing up the CFL's all-time passing list, leads the Birmingham Barracudas after missing the first two games of the season with a hairline fracture of his index finger. Last year, Matt Dunnigan was on pace for 51 touchdown passes and 6,500 yards. He played just 11 games and still passed for nearly 4,000 yards. Now Dunnigan on second down. Has a man. He's open. He got drilled. But Delius Morris hangs on, and the Birmingham Barracudas have a first down. He got rocked by the safety, Roger Henning, and by number 31, Sam Rogers. What a hit by Rogers on the play, but credit to uh, credit credit there to 5'9", 175 pound Morris. That's a little guy who took a big hit there over the middle and hung on to the football. And now a Birmingham first down, the Barracudas first. And Dunnigan again back to throw, and he's throwing long, has a man down at the 30-yard line. As he completes it down there to Derek Crawford, the former Calgary Stampeder, and a gain of 16 as Birmingham quickly goes to work. And you see number 62, Big Fred Childress, 6'3", 340 pounds acquired from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers for Reggie Slack. Dunnigan has another former bomber, Keith Woodside, in the backfield. Derek Crawford, the most experienced of the Birmingham receivers in his fifth CFL season. Another first down for the Barracudas, and now Dunnigan from the shotgun, looking to the end zone, and Crawford has it broken up. Two Hamilton Ticats were back there on the defensive coverage. Roger Henning was there, as was Don Robinson. And a nice play by Henning coming across to help out Robinson in that deep middle zone. You know, he's a free safety, and he's asked to stay in the middle and stay deep and give help on that post pattern. Crawford gets inside, Roger stays in the, Robinson stays on the outside, rather, and then Henning comes across from the safety position, gets his hands on the ball. Really should have had the interception, but a good play. Now on second down, Dunnigan again with time, has a man open at the sidelines. It's Donald Moffat. Moffat, one man to beat inside the 10, gets down to the 8-yard line. Stephon Adams makes the stop, but Dunnigan has another first down. It'll be first and goal from the Hamilton 8. Yeah, and Dunnigan right now in the ballgame is really spreading out his offense. He's got one back in the backfield, and then he's got Moffat, who's his other running back out wide to the wide side of the field. He's really wanting to spread things around, finds Moffat in the flat, and lets him get a couple on his own. First and goal from the eight. Dunnigan again from the shotgun. End zone, and it's caught right at the goal line by Marcus Grant. He'll pick up seven on the play as he gets right down to the Hamilton one, but he was not able to get into the end zone. Dunnigan doesn't have a lot of big receivers. Again, Grant, 5'9", 176 pounds, but he went into that middle and caught that quick slant. And the Barracudas in their hurry-up offense. Three receivers at the far side of the field. It's second and goal from the one. play is called. We had a cameraman who was actually in the field of play. One of the local television people and so the side judge Art McAvoy had to move him out of the way so the hurry up offense has slowed somewhat but now Dunnigan is back on second and goal and the Barracuda threatening to score on their first ever possession at home. Dunnigan quickly rolls up. Flags are down. It's a touchdown in the end zone to Delius Morris and now there's pushing and shoving in the end zone and look out Stephon Adams shove the official on the sidelines and we'll see what the flags are about when i initially saw the play where it looked like it was
was a pick by Birmingham. And we'll see what Ken Lazaruk has to say. Hamilton declined. Side was the call against the Thai Cats, so the penalty naturally is declined, and the touchdown pass to Delius Morris stands. It's his first touchdown reception in the Canadian Football League. And I stand corrected. It wasn't a pick, it was a rub. Offenses call it rub, and defenses call it picks. But the Hamilton Thai Cats were man to man there. It just got a little bit of a rub and a little bit of a juggle, and then the first touchdown for Birmingham in their home field. And now Scott. For Barbie Franco Grilla for the point after with Dunning in the hole. Again, there was early movement. Flags are down, but Grilla puts it through. And the first time they touch the football at home, the Birmingham Barracudas come up with a touchdown. Elias Morris celebrates his first in the Canadian Football League, and Birmingham leads it 7 3. Boy, we sold sweepers to places like Kuwait. We sold sweepers to Japan, Taiwan, Australia, Mexico, Sweden. I'm an accountant, so I, I know about costs. And any places that we can look at to save costs, we're going to do it. Advantage Savings Plan is certainly one way that we can do that. We were spending $1,500 a month. Costs went down to $800 a month. What it allowed us to do is contact more customers and to have more contact with our existing customers. Hey, you want to know how to protect something? You wrap it up. You want to protect it? You wrap it up. So, you want to protect it? Wrap it up. Gulf's elite from around the globe are set to challenge for the most prized trophy in the game. The 1995 British Open from Scotland's famed St. Andrews. Coverage begins Thursday, July 20th. Gulf's majors only on TSN. 24-year-old Detroit native Delius Morris has his fourth CFL catch and his first Canadian Football League touchdown, and the tie catch didn't think it was a catch play. Yeah, a little bit of a pick, and Delius Morris actually juggled it a little bit when he first caught the ball. You'll see just as it goes down to his hip, a little bit of a juggle, but referee felt that he had possession long enough, and once you break that plane with the ball, it's a touchdown. And this is a competitive football player that wanted to get his team out early in front of their home fans. And Matt Dunnigan, a year ago yesterday, set the Canadian Football League record for passing yards in a single game, 713 against the Edmonton Eskimos. And Dunnigan, on his first possession of the season, is out quickly, but you see him shaking that right hand. And remember, Dunnigan did have a fractured index finger. And we'll keep a close eye on that, as Dunnigan is certainly keeping an eye on it on the sideline. And so once again, it'll be up to the Birmingham Barracudas to kick it off, and it'll be Franco Grilla. And this could be a shootout, unlike the game we saw last night where the Saskatchewan Rough Riders offense was actually outscored by its defense. Grilla with the kickoff. Again, it's not deep. Bounces down around the 20-yard line and out of bounds, so they'll be forced to do this again. So as they go back to set it up again, we can tell you seven plays, 75 yards, and Matt Dunnigan came out gunning from the shotgun, the spread formation, the hurry-up offense. Dieter Brock, the offensive coordinator, seems to have picked up the Canadian Football League game right where he left it. Yeah, and Dunnigan's the perfect guy to run that kind of offense. He likes to spread things out, likes to get all his receivers involved in the action, and he wants to throw the ball downfield. I once heard him about four years ago when we were getting ready to play him in Saskatchewan say in the newspaper, you can't go wrong if you go long. <laughs> Hey, that's the Dieter theory, right? That's and, right. And you know, as a defensive back, I was going, oh, no, it's going to be a long night. And he can definitely get it done, and that's the kind of offense he likes, and he did a great job in their first series. Seven plays for the Birmingham Barracudas. Each one of them was a pass. And Jack Pardee, who used the run and shoot most recently with the Houston Oilers, has that spread offense working early for Birmingham. And now five yards back, they'll kick it off again. And this time, they send it deep. This is Kelvin Means from the 10. Means finds the seam outside out across the 30 to the 33-yard line. It's a return of 24 yards after a 66-yard kickoff. Well, Anthony Cavillo, as we mentioned, the youngest starting quarterback in the CFL. Look at him already, four for six for 47 yards. And that last drive stalled because Earl Winfield had a sure touchdown pass go out of his hand. So Cavillo has a hot hand once again early on. His Hamilton Ticats begin first and ten from their own 34. Cavillo with time. And a man over the middle, but the pass bounced out of his hands. He was looking once again for Kelvin Means, and three Birmingham defenders 
closed in on him, led by number 48, Mike James. That was the first time that we saw a little bit of pressure on Cavill from Sean Peoples, number 56, coming off that right side. He gets a little bit of upfield pressure, and that forces Cavill not to get the full extension on his throw, and he couldn't get it into that curl. Now on second and ten. The Ticats working into a slight breeze. Three receivers to the near side. That's what Cavill is looking. Underneath he goes. The pass is dropped by Manny Hazard. And Hazard will be getting some razzing from his former Birmingham teammates as the Ticats offense goes back to the sidelines and drops have been a problem for the Ticats early on. Yeah, I mean, there's just a, a little bit of nervousness, it looks like, for the Hamilton Ticats playing in the States and uh, playing in front of a lot of their a lot of their family. I was down there in warm-up, and a lot of the guys have, like, had to buy 32 tickets for the game. And Hank Alisic, after taking 1994 off, is back there to punt for the Hamilton Ticats, the 35-year-old in his 18th CFL season. Low snap to Alisic, and he gets a low driving kick away. This is Anthony Drawhorn from the 30. Drawhorn trying to get outside, does, and gets out across the 40 to the 43-yard line. The Birmingham Barracuda scored a touchdown on their first possession at home. We'll see what they do with their second when we return to Alabama. Car and Driver has chosen their 10 best automobiles for 1995. Quite a select group. They all have the kind of safety features you would expect, like dual airbags, anti-lock braking systems, and reinforced body structure. They all have outstanding performance credentials, as you would expect. And they all have the kind of sticker price you would expect of a vehicle in such an elite group. All except one, the 1995 Ford Contour. It's nice to be in such good company, but not all the time. Citizens living in the grip of fear. A justice system littered with criminals. The evil underworld of the city infesting the streets. It's time to take out the trash. In Sega's Adventures of Batman and Robin video game, vile villains are bent on trashing Gotham City. Fight through incredible 3D animation as Batman or Robin, or team up against the Joker and other vermin. The Adventures of Batman and Robin. CFL Live, brought to you in part by 3M Canada. Imagining the unthinkable and developing the unknown. That's 3M Innovation at Work. We mentioned Hank Alessic in his 18th CFL season. Last week he played in his 250th Canadian Football League game. He's only the eighth player in the history of the league to reach that mark. And you see where he is on the all-time games played list. And Lou Pisaglia, he just won't quit 303 games and counting. And Alisic's former teammate, Dave Cutler, is next in Hank Alisic's sights. And right now he's looking on as this Birmingham offense, which has proven itself to be quite potent in the early going, goes back to work with a first down starting at its own 42-yard line. And again, then again in the Birmingham offense go without a huddle. Three receivers to the near side of the field. And on first down. Dunnigan fakes one way, goes back the other, complete to Morris. And Morris beat the first man, but the rest of the containment moved up quickly and made the tackle led by Eric Carter, limiting the gain to just three yards. The Hamilton defense led by Mike O'Shea, the CFL Rookie of the Year two seasons ago, but the Ticats decimated by defections. We saw five former Ticats in the King for Memphis last night. And a largely rebuilt defensive backfield with three first-year players for the Hamilton Ticats. On second and seven. Early movement, flags are down. Here's Woodside with the carry, gets outside after a great block on O'Shea. Another good block, springs Woodside outside, flags are down. Woodside still going inside the 20, forced out of bounds at the 19, but this may be coming back. Well, I don't know, Gordon. It looked like uh, Mike Philbrick up front jumped offside for Hamilton. And then there was another block around the corner. Another flag came down, so we'll see what the two flags are all about. It's a gain of 45 for Keith Woodside. And Ken Lazarek and company have some settling to do. Here's the call. Offside, Hamilton declined. So offside is the only call. It was a late flag that came down on the right side. And Mike O'Shea got wiped out on a block that sprang Woodside for that 45-yard gain. 
Yeah, big Mike Dobrek up front, jumped a little early, and then out comes Woodside. And watch the block by Crawford on coming up right there, just to the side of your screen. A great block to spring his running back out wide. Here it comes on number 20, Greer. A nice crackback block to spring his running back. Now back to the live action, a pass into the end zone, and incomplete. They were looking there for number 86, Ted Long, and there's another flag down this time at the eight-yard line, and Long, the 26-year-old who played at Oklahoma, very nearly had a touchdown catch for Birmingham, and the Barracudas have been dynamite on offense so far. Boy, Matt Dunnigan loves that seam route. Here comes the call. Too many players. Hamilton, there were 13. Southern wants to talk it over on the sideline. Yeah, there's some confusion out there right now. He's just going to call the timeout and get things organized. It's too important when you're on the 10-yard line. Have too many men on the field. And then almost have a touchdown from <laughs> And Southern has his timeout, so he'll talk it over with his defensive captains. And one thing about Don Southern, he made it clear when he took over in Hamilton, his way or the highway. And you see Urban Bowman there, the defensive coordinator for the Ticats. Former Winnipeg Blue Bomber and Ottawa Rough Rider assistant coach. But Sudsy played for Woody Hayes, and he said he hasn't learned everything from Woody Hayes, but you can see his sideline demeanor is very similar. Yeah, and I talked to Derek Greer at the corner, right corner for Hamilton, you know, and they, he was saying, boy, is he ever a great coach. He said in his one year here, he's learned more about the game than he has in all his college and pro career combined. It would appear that Jesse Beckton was the extra man on the field since Southern was yelling at him and pointing at his head. And now on first and goal, Dunnigan lays it up into the end zone for Moffitt, but he ran out of room, and Donald Moffitt with the 15-yard CFL end zone here in Birmingham, wishing for the regulation 20. That would have been a touchdown. Yeah, man-to-man -man coverage. Dunnigan got what he wanted. He went to the back on Stephon Adams, and uh, good coverage by Adams. Ran him right to the end zone. There's really no place for Dunnigan to throw that football. Well, the end zone, as we mentioned, five yards short of regulation, but much roomier than the ones we saw in Memphis last night. The field regulation width fits nicely in here at Legion Field. Second and goal from the 10. Dunnigan has pressure, steps up. He's got room to run. It's a foot race at the end zone with O'Shea. Dunnigan diving for it. And they look. No indication from the official yet. And they're marking him out of bounds, just shy of the end zone an inch short of the goal line it'll be third and goal from the one and like we saw damon allen taking off a lot for memphis last night this is what he can do for you matt dunnigan whenever he sees the opening up front is going to take off he rolls a little bit to his right doesn't find what he wants coverage wise so he takes off in the middle in that opening and then it's just a foot race to the end zone with o'shea and of course you're going to take dunnigan in that battle and just doesn't make it before he gets pushed out of bounds by o'shea i don't know I don't think he made that one. That's a defensive player talking. <laughs> Third and goal from the one. Dunnigan straight ahead. Touchdown. Two possessions, two touchdowns, and the Barracudas love Legion Field so far. And Matt, and Matt Dunnigan, in his career, has scored 69 rushing touchdowns. That is amazing for a quarterback. And another great drive with mixed up some passing, a little bit of passing, and then a little bit of running with the big run by Woodside, which actually set up the touchdown. So a couple of penalties, one for too many men, really helped the Barracuda. You see Dunnigan just sliding into the end zone to score his first touchdown of the year. Yeah, just went right in behind big Craig Gibson at 6'2", 270, and Gibson got low, and Dunnigan followed him in. The point after from Franco Grilla is good, and with 3.29 to play in the first quarter, the Birmingham Barracudas under Jack Pardee have scored on each of their first two possessions, and Matt is back. Yeah, that's his style. You know, Matt Dunnigan is the type of quarterback that wants to attack, attack, attack. He's going to go after you. He's going to throw the ball deep. He doesn't have a problem with it. And we saw seven passes on the first drive. This time they go a little bit more to the ground. We saw the big game by Woodside. And, of course, Dunnigan caps it off with the one-yard run. But what a season Matt Dunnigan would have had last year when you think about it. If he'd not been injured, he was on pace to have the best passing season in the history of the game in football league. Still, he tore his Achilles in week number 11. Yeah, injuries have been a problem for Matt. He's actually working on one right now. And he's the type of guy that will play with injuries as well. I mean, he's a little banged up. He can't have a fractured index finger on your passing hand. 
and be back in two weeks and have it completely healthy. He said the toughest thing was taking the snap from center. Yeah, that when you get when you have to absorb the snap from center because they fire it up there to make sure you get it. You have to absorb that snap. I'm sure it's a lot of pain every time he gets the ball. Well, Franco Grill has been a busy man for the Birmingham Barracudas. This will be his third kickoff of the first quarter. And Don Southern is reading the riot act to his defensive football team. Southern's just letting everybody know that, hey, it's early in the ball game. We've had a couple passes dropped that stall drives. Let's get away from the penalties and everything will be fine. Willow sends it deep. This is Means. And Means outside. Two men to beat. One is the kicker, and he held him up just long enough. And he was stopped by Fernando Thomas, number three, but a great return by Means. Let's get an update from Darren. Welcome back to CFL Control. I'm telling you, we've got a great game between the running backs in this one. You saw the large run early on by Pringle. How about Mike Saunders? 13 yards out. He'll scamper into the end zone. That is his fourth touchdown that ties the game at seven. Man of the sketch with Rough Riders missed Mike Saunders. The great return sets the tie cats up just inside Barracuda territory. Flags are all over the place as they swing it out to Kalen Hall. He beat the first man, and now he gets beat up by six Barracudas at the sidelines. He was absolutely drilled, and looks like the call is going against the tie cats for holding. Yeah, it looks like we're going to get a little holding call over there on Richardson, and it was a design play. Cavillo is just rolling out to his right and setting up the screen back to Kalen Hall. You know, they want to get the ball in Hall's hands as much as they can, whether it be through the air or handing it off to him because he can do so much with it Holding, in the old field. Hamilton, number 82, 10 yard penalty, first down receiver. Holding is the call on Frank Maroff in his fourth CFL season, former Calgary Stampeder and Ottawa Rough Rider, who caught his first touchdown pass in the CFL last week. Well, let me apologize to Dave Richardson. <laughs> I don't want those big guys mad at me for calling him Holding. Ticats penalized five times already for 30 yards. Now, first and 20 from their own 46. Cavill with a long throw for Winfield. And again, Fernando Thomas was right in his face. So that's three incomplete passes that have gone the direction of Earl the Pearl. Nice coverage by Fernando Thomas. He's got quite a task tonight. He's got one of the best receivers on the league uh, in Earl Winfield lined up right across from him. He already has an interception in 1995, and he's got his work cut out for him tonight. Winfield in his ninth year of North Carolina, another player who picked up a few tickets for this game. He has family and friends down here. And if nothing else, Canadian teams are great for attendance in U.S. Bay cities. They've all got to buy a lot of tickets. Now on second and 20, Cavill flags are down again. He goes the other side and drilled is Kelvin Means. A gain of 11. He'll be well short of the first down. And Jack Pardee wants... Is Birmingham Barracudas to accept the penalty holding the call against the Ticats and Dave Richardson is slow getting up for Hamilton. And just as I said, Dave Richardson in the previous play wasn't holding, made the mistake, and he must have heard me and got the holding call there. But it was a nice throw by Cavill to throw that out pattern on time. Hamilton number 56, decline. Third down. We got it in for Dave Richardson tonight. <laughs> No, Dale Dave. Sanderson, the oh. center, called for holding. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. <laughs> Dale Sanderson gets called for holding on that one, and good pressure right up the middle by Steve Anderson right there. And looks like the Burmy, that Birmingham Barracuda is going to set a little more pressure as the game progresses. And Hank Alisic is back to punt once again for the Hamilton Ticat. Anthony Drawhorn is back deep to receive, along with Delius Morris. Alyssic with a very low kick bounces down around the 22 yard line and out of bounds. Kind of a knuckleball by Alyssic, but he gets the job done as it goes out of bounds at the 22 yard line. Next week, you and I will get our first look at Doug Flutie in 1995. He only passed for about 490 yards against Ottawa. <laughs> the Lions at the Stampeders, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, a rematch of last year's Western Final at McMahon Stadium where it was Darren Flutie. Who stole a great cup bid from his brother. Yeah, and Danny McManus, who did a great job at quarterback. That's going to be an excellent game. Great matchup there. 
So the Barracudas with their worst field position of the game after a 26-yard punt by Alyssa. Great fake by Dunnigan. Has a man open, but he one-hopped it as he was looking to the sideline. And it falls incomplete. He was looking over there for number 86, Ted Long. And watch big Mike Campbell coming over from Toronto. Watch the pressure that he's going to put on Matt Dunnigan. And Dunnigan just gets the ball away, and Campbell gives him a shot, lets him know that he's there. And luckily that one fell incomplete for Birmingham. Now Dunnigan on second down. Lots of time. Over the middle intercepted by Mike O'Shea. What a catch by the linebacker. And O'Shea now up and running, looking for a block. with a great athletic effort, jumps up and makes the interception, and Don Southern's team catches a big break. Yeah, it was a great play by Michael Shea in the middle. I don't think Matt Dunnigan even saw him. He's going to roll a bit to his left to try and throw back into the seam. But a great leap by O'Shea. I didn't know he had a vertical like that. That was quite the jump. And then a nice little return by the big man going down the sidelines. And Matt Dunnigan, the quarterback, He's the last guy back, or that one might be in the end zone. Yeah, that's the last thing Birmingham wants to see is Matt Dunnigan making tackles. First and 10 for the Ticats from the 11. Cavillo. Quick drop. End zone and incomplete. He was looking there for number 81, Manny Hazard. And Hazard hasn't been able to snare one of those passes from Cavillo. That one a little high, and Michael O'Shea with a big defensive play, just what the Ticats needed. Well, last series, there was a couple of holding calls for Hamilton, and they're definitely getting a lot of pressure coming from Peoples on the outside, and Ledbetter up the middle, and... Now, second and 10 from the 11. Three receivers to the near side. Cavillo. Looking to the end zone. Frank Maroff can't make the catch. Great defensive play by Eddie Davis. The left defensive halfback in his first year out of Northern Illinois. What a great play to take it away from Frank Merrill. It really was great coverage by Davis. He stays in great position on his back pedal, and then on the break, gets a little bump. You're allowed to protect your ground. Then Davis times his jump and goes up and gets his hands up there. And Gord's grabbing my shirt up here in the booth, saying that might have been a little interference, but I don't know. I think I'd let that one go. I was just wringing out your shirt. Oh, I was... <laughs> <laughs> it's a little moist here in Birmingham again tonight. You and I will come back to Canada a little, uh, a little lighter than we were when we left. <laughs> well, 108 and then 100 degrees. I don't know about you, but I, I can't really afford the weight loss. <laughs> but I'd highly recommend it for anyone who'd like to lose some weight. A, a quick walk around the block will do it for you. And flags are down. The Ticats again didn't have the right number of people on the field. So this ball is ball as the field goal try will come from five yards further back. Or just as we talk about the heat, we were talking about this in Memphis last night with these coolers. I've played in the CFL for 11 years, and we've had heaters on the sideline many, many times. I've never seen coolers to cool you down until you came down to the States. This field goal try will come from the 18-yard line. Osbaldiston puts it up and through, and the tie catch, thanks to Osbaldiston's second field goal of the game, have cut the lead to eight. They're now down 14-6. Nine seconds to play in the first quarter. Yeah, Paul Osbaldiston, what a career he's had. You know, back in uh, 1989, he had 233 points, which tied the lead record in the CFL. And he's working with the new holder right now, and Frank Maroff came over from Calgary. So you can see by the kicking in way that hold and everything went smoothly so it looks like that uh, Paul's balls has got everything under control and we did see some problems in the kicking game last night in Memphis how about that the first four placements were missed including a convert at Dave Ridgeway missed two field yeah and that's something you never see but uh, and you won't see probably much more this year hey, your old team's 0-3 since you retired <laughs> I didn't want to bring it up I'm glad you did <laughs> First down for the 35, Dunningham fakes one way and now goes the other. And he has it complete over there for number 20, Jason Phillips, who also played at the University of Houston. In fact, the offensive coordinator here in Birmingham is John Jenkins, who was at the University of Houston. He's got four players from that Cougar offense. All four of them play on Matt Dunnigan's offensive team. Mike Campbell is the injured player right now as the first quarter has come to a conclusion. Birmingham leading it by a score of 14 to 6 as we come to the end of the first 15 minutes. 
now for an update from CFL Control. This CFL Live update is brought to you by Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. Welcome back to CFL Control. Good game in San Antonio tonight. Early on in this contest, it looks as though the Stallions might run away with it. It is Pringle. He's off and running. He would hit the 50, the 40, the 30. We thought he was going all the way. He'd get tackled. He fumbles the football. In comes Shannon Culver. He would recover. That made it 7 to nothing. But the Texans come right back. Mike Saunders with a 13-yard run. That ties the game up at seven. The Texans have just grabbed the lead. Archer has thrown his fifth touchdown pass of the season. It is now 14 to seven in the second quarter. We'll take a short break. Back with more in moments. Recently, Subway asked us, Bucky and Vinny, to review their turkey and bacon deluxe. So we decided to do a little research. This is where turkey is. Where's the bacon? What do we think? It's great. We got nice seasoned turkey with all the trimming. A fresh baked bread topped with slices of real bacon. That's what makes it deluxe. Hey, look, even brought napkins. <laughs> Subway, what a sandwich. The Montreal Expos went in six and a half back of Philly for that wild card spot. They leave one to nothing in the third. Let's go back to Gordon Glenn. And you see Mike Campbell has gone to the sidelines for the Hamilton Ticats coming over from the Toronto Argonauts to the right of your screen. Yeah, you'll see Campbell just get that low block and the big guys hate to see someone go down at their legs and that's why he's visibly upset. He was visibly upset on the sidelines. Rushing yards, 55 for the Barracudas, eight for the Ticats. But the amazing thing is three possessions, two scores, and the third possession was snuffed up by a turnover. The interception by O'Shea is the only turnover of the football game so far. So we begin the second quarter Birmingham has the football at its own 37-yard line. It will be second and eight. Nice balance attack for Birmingham. 77 yards through the air, 55 on the ground. Of course, a lot came on that one big run by Woodside, but nice balance attack, and Dunnigan is definitely going after this Hamilton defense. And the folks here in Birmingham getting their first look at the Canadian Football League seem to like what they see. And I know the owner, A.L. Williams, likes what he sees. Is Looks like a crowd in excess of 30,000 here for Birmingham's first game on a night when the temperature is in excess of 100 degrees. Now second and eight. Three receivers to the far side of the field for Dunnigan. Dunnigan changing the play. And it's the sprint draw. Keith Woodside trying to get to the first down mark. He gets across the 40 to the 43. Michael Philbrook made the tackle and stopped Keith Woodside, who was released by Winnipeg after the first week from getting to the first down marker. And Keith Woodside, four rushes for 25 yards so far in 1995. He had the big run earlier in the game. And uh, it's, he's going to be the lone setback in that offense for Dunnigan. He's really spreading things out and getting everybody in the pass receiving routes and leaving Woodside the lone setback in the backfield. Game was five, and it leaves Birmingham three yards short of a first down. And Scott Player, the punter, from Florida State is in for the first time for the Barracudas. Hamilton setting up the return. This is Andrew Grigg. He watches it bounce out of bounds up at about the 37-yard line. So that's where Cavillo and the Hamilton offense will go to work. Cavillo last season for the Las Vegas Posse. 13 touchdown passes and 15 interceptions, but down the stretch for Las Vegas, he threw 10 touchdown passes and only three interceptions. That's right. Statistics are for losers. They'll tell you that at the quarterback, the best statistic he can have is the win-loss column, and that's all they really care about. That was a great Las Vegas team last year. Maybe not very well coached when you look at all the talent that's playing for other teams. First and 10 now for the Ticats from the 37. And again, they set up that receiver screen, and again, it's sniffed out by the Birmingham Barracudas as Manny Hazard is upended after picking up four yards. Yeah, real nice pursuit on the play by Andre Strode as he gets out there from his halfback position to... This is a design play. Camille's just going to throw it up to the screen to Manny Hazard and then he just tries to pick up his blocks, but good pursuit. Nice tackle in the open field by Strode. 
Now on second and six. Camillo changing things up. And quickly, the other side to Earl Winfield. Winfield looking for a block, but he gets dropped short of the first down marker. Great defensive play by the veteran Anthony Drawhorn, your former teammate. That's right, but he was a former teammate as a halfback, and all throughout his career, he's been a halfback. Here with Birmingham, he's playing free safety. He lined up low in that in, in the package, safety low, they call it. It's a possibility that he, we may see him blitz, and then he just pursues out to the screen to Winfield. Nice tackle. I didn't know Anthony Drawhorn could tackle like that. 29-year-old <laughs> from UNLV. Great cover man. And now Hank Elisic is back to punt once again, and Drawhorn is one of the men deep to receive, along with Delius Morris. Elisic with another low driving kick, very returnable for Drawhorn. Here comes Drawhorn up across the 30, waiting for a block. Elisic is the only man back, and Hank Elisic held him up long enough to force him out of bounds. It's a punt of 42, but a very returnable one. It came back 31 yards in Birmingham. Want to try new Pert Plus? No way. I tried it years ago. My hair needs a separate conditioner. This new stuff cleans and conditions better than back then. But it's still a shampoo and conditioner in one. True. But while some other two-in-ones only vary the level of the same conditioners, new Pert Plus actually has different conditioning formulas, customized for each hair type. We'll see. Well, it is actually better. It's really manageable. New Pert Plus. Customized conditioning that's right for you. Just a reminder, Labatt Genuine Draft goes down easy because it's real draft. Gravity. Just a reminder, Labatt Genuine Draft goes down easy because it's real draft. This is how the Texans take the lead in San Antonio. David Archer with his fifth touchdown pass of the season. It's 11 yards to Mark Stock in the end zone. 14 to seven. These two teams do not like each other at all. Well, veteran Hank Elisic has punted for more yards than any man in CFL history, but every once in a while, he hits a low driving one and has to come up and make the tackle. Yeah, and I talked to him before the game. He said his leg feels live, and he, he may play one or two or three more years, but if he has to do this too much, it won't last that long. It looks like we talked about being the hammer of the nail. I think Hank was the nail on that one, but yeah. he got him out of bounds. Yeah, he got him out of bounds, <laughs> and he saw his head snap back. <laughs> I know one guy who's happy to see Hank Elisic back. That's Henry the Gizmo Williams, who... It's had great success against Elisic. And by the way, Hank wants to say hi to everybody back in Toronto at the Betty Golf Tournament. He wasn't able to make it this year. He played last year, of course, because he's retired. On first and ten, Dunnigan. Lots of time. He's looking deep. Has a man dropper. He has to wait for the ball. And now flags are down as there was contact downfield with the quarterback, Derek Greer, right down at about the 17-yard line. You're going to think I'm sounding biased here, Gore, but I think we're going to get an offensive interference on this one. What? Greer turned back and looked back. Matt Dunnigan looks off the safety and then goes back to Crawford down the sideline. And watch how Greer's head goes back. As long as your head goes back and you're looking back at the ball, it's it's not supposed to be pass interference, but it looks like that's what it is. It was. It was Greer. Defensive pass interference. You are biased. Okay, I'm sorry. I'll stop cheerleading for DBs, but of course you're gonna, you, you gotta, this is, he's trying to press his case with the official. He's saying, wait a minute, I look back to the ball, that was, that was fair. He put his hand up, it was space guard. 45-yard <laughs> penalty, first down Birmingham. The throw goes to the sidelines and incomplete for Donald Moffat. It'll bring up second down and penalties have really been a problem. For the tie cats as they've been penalized series after series. That's eight now for 80 yards. Yeah, Matt Dunnigan really has his defense off balance. He's mixing things up nice. He doesn't hesitate at all to go deep, which stretch things out against that defense. So good play calling by Matt Dunnigan and execution. Three receivers to the wide side of the field. Woodside is the lone back. And Dunnigan, here comes the rush. Dunnigan. 
has time, has a man, and one hops it looking for Delius Morris. It'll bring up third down for Birmingham. So the Barracudas are unable to score a touchdown off the big penalty. Now Franco Grilla and the field goal unit come on the field. This is just an all-around great football play. You get the out run, and you get uh, Strode on the coverage. Good coverage, good pattern. Dunnigan has to make a perfect throw. He does that just to the outside, but number 85, Delius Morris, can't come up with the catch. Now we have Derek Crawford on the sidelines getting some medical attention. Crawford was a great player for the Calgary Stampeders until a horrific injury at BC Place. He suffered a fracture and dislocation of his ankle. And the Stampeders just didn't want to wait for him to become the kind of player that he was. And so Crawford has landed here in Birmingham. And Franco Grilla, who is three for four so far this season, the longest of 49, is back to try the field goal for the Birmingham Barracudas. And a time count violation was called against Birmingham. They didn't have enough guys on the field. And you know, when you go back to that Crawford, and it's just, Crawford was the guy going deep down the sideline on that interference call. So hopefully it's not a hamstring pull because that could be a good one. But you know what? When you saw him run down that sideline and leave Greer by about one or two yards, it looks like he's recovered completely from that injury. And much more comfortable playing on grass. Everybody is. <laughs> <laughs> this try will come from the 27-yard line. Dunnigan to hold. Willow puts it up and good. And the Birmingham scoring explosion continues. The lead is back up to 11. 11 29 to play in the second quarter. 17 to 6 is the score. Looks terrific. Is that beef stew you're cooking? Yes. And I'm also studying a course in computer programming. You're probably thinking you don't have time to train for a better career, even if it means more money. But you do with ICS. Just call this 800 number for free information on training at home with ICS. Choose from ICS high school, child psychology, police sciences, computer programming, auto mechanics, locksmithing, interior decorating, floral design, TV VCR repair, travel tourism, small engine repair, child daycare, fitness and nutrition, or get your business diploma in accounting, business management, or managing your own business. If I had to rush off to night school, I'd miss reading to Jimmy. It's one of the few moments that we have to spend together. Everything you need to learn will be delivered to your door so you can get a degree or diploma in your spare time. Call now for free information from ICS. Call 1-800-238-6600. There's absolutely no obligation. That's 1-800-238-6600. delicious frozen concentrated iced tea from McCain. Refreshing, thirst-quenching beverage made with the essence of unique tea blends. McCain iced tea. Caffeine-free, no powdery taste. Just the clean, fresh-tasting flavor of McCain iced tea. Caffeine-free, no powdery taste. McCain, great-tasting refreshment down to a tea. Welcome back to Birmingham. And as they would say down here, they got a hat. <laughs> Good crowd, they're excited. There's some atmosphere in this building. And they've seen a lot of Franco Grilla, the Birmingham kicker. This will be his fourth kickoff. Got a couple of field goals, a couple of converts. But unbelievable, this guy. That's the way kickers like it, though. You know, they love to be involved in the game. Dave Ridgway always tells me he wants to kick off to stay involved. And this kickoff bounces down around the 15-yard line, picked up there by Andrew Gray. Check that. It's number 83 Kelvin Means and Means gets up across the 31 a kickoff of 60 a return of 16 and Dave Ridgeway was not very involved last night but tonight Anthony Cavill 7 of 14 no touchdowns yet for the big guy but what did Dave Ridgeway do last night well yeah I, I'm gonna you know what if I don't say it this way I'm gonna get a phone call so he's working in a new holder <laughs> <laughs> but I mean he was only on the field like three times in the first half wasn't it yeah and they just the kicking game was not happening for either team last night it was a, a battle of the defenses First down, Cavill goes back to the shotgun for Birmingham. Here comes the rush. Cavill with time, throws it underneath, has his man, but Kalen Hall couldn't get very far. He was dropped by Akaba Delaney, man from Portland State, 23-year-old, another first-year player for the Birmingham Barracudas, and there's more than a few of them out there. And we've seen that Hamilton offense and Cavill trying to get the ball in Kalen Hall's hands any way they can. We've seen it on screens. We've seen it on over routes and handing the ball off in the backfield, and going to see that number 24 a lot tonight. 
Gain was four at second and six. Three receivers again to the wide side of the field. Both teams using a five receiver package. Cavillo throws it underneath for Manny Hazard. Hazard trying to get to the first down marker. It'll be close as he was thrown down there by number four, Andre Strode, number 48, Mike James. Real good coverage by this young Barracuda's defensive secondary. They've been right on their man for the majority of this game. And Cavillo's going to need some help. You know, he's gone over to Manny Hazard, who only has three catches for 43 yards in 1995 coming into this football game. And it's one of the number one targets tonight. But these receivers are going to have to start shaking some of this coverage. And Hazard was able to just get to the first down marker out across the 40 for the 42. Now they give it to Kalen Hall. Hall got by the first wave. And there's a flag down. This is coming back. Holding is the call against the Ticats. Now, I'm not going to predict who it was against. Okay. <laughs> Good. We'll wait and let the ref tell us. And Don Southern, who prides his team's discipline, won't like this. Holding, Hamilton, number 66, 10 yard Finley, first down repeated. Right here is where we're going to get the is where we're going to get the, the holding call. Big Blaine Schmidt is going to put the mitts right there on his. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. We got the old collar technique. Hog tie him. Blaine Schmidt, the former Edmonton Eskimo and Toronto Argonaut, who moonlights as a football player, is a very successful cellular phone dealer in Toronto. So the game comes back first and 20. They deliver underneath for Earl Winfield, but Anthony Drawhorn has been all over the field. Holds up Winfield, who gets about a yard shy of the original line of scrimmage. It'll be a gain of nine. And then we went, we saw man-to-man -man defense for um, the, the Barracuda so far, and they've been great in man-to-man. -man. And then when they run into the zone, we see some holes opening up. That time they played the zone defense, a little bit of pressure on Cavill, but he stands in there nicely poised and Oof. throws a strike with bodies flying all over him. Angelo snipes right in the middle of that and makes throws a strike out there to Earl Winfield. Second and 11, Cavill for Winfield, and Winfield can't make the catch because Fernando Thomas was all over him. And Thomas, a native of Shreveport who played university football at Southwest Louisiana, has been Earl Winfield's worst nightmare so far. Yeah, and again, they're in the man-to-man -man defense. This is what they've had a lot of success with so far in this football game. But Frank Tom or Fernando Thomas never has to get out of his backpedal. He's patient, he stays in his backpedal, and then when Winfield turns that curl route, he can come out of it and break on the ball and knock it down. You know, when Birmingham's been in man, they've been very successful. They go to that zone, there's been some holes. Anthony Drawhorn had a 31-yard return last time. And this time, it's kind of off the side of Alyssa's foot. And Drawhorn had it go right by him. Flags are down, and Drawhorn had to retreat to the 20-yard line where he gets snowed under as flags fly, and Drawhorn had trouble hanging on to that. We'll sort out the penalties when we come back. 8.21 to play in the first half. Birmingham leads Hamilton 17-6. Twenty foot baskets, three hundred point games, one hundred yard courts. In the future, athletes will make the game faster, farther, tougher. But today's athlete can choose new all sport, fluid replacement, unsurpassed taste, four thirst quenching flavors. All sport is a body quencher. So before it gets to this new all sport, the game will never be the same. You know enough to keep medications out of reach. You know enough to block off the stairway. You know enough to buckle them up. No! But do you know enough not to hurt them? A message from the Canadian Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Children. Welcome back to CFL Control. Second half of this home and home. A lot of animosity. And the Stallions come back to tie it up. Tracy Ham will go to Reggie Perry. Great grab. It's 14-14 in the second quarter of play. Let's go back to Gordon Glenn. Another penalty call against the Hamilton Ticats. This time no yards is the call. And that'll give Matt Dunnigan and the Birmingham offense a first down at their own 37-yard line. Penalties have been a major story in the football game so far. 
particularly for Hamilton, 10 for 105. Birmingham's only penalty was offside on a field goal try, and they deliberately took that because they want, actually it was too much time on a field goal try because they didn't have enough men on the field. So the Tie Cats with 10 penalties so far in the football game. And Birmingham brings it out first and 10 from its own 37. And again, three receivers to the wide side of the field. And that's where Dunnigan's rolling. Lots of time for Dunnigan. Stops, throws back across the middle, and the pass falls incomplete as he was looking there for Derek Crawford, who had his hamstring taped a moment ago. But the coverage provided on the play by number 20, the corner, Derek Greer. It's a real good job by Terry or by Greer, Derek Greer. Derek Greer. He stay he stays home on the backside. You know, Greer was coached by Les Brown, one of the best in the league, and he wasn't fooled. This is a design play. Dunnigan's trying to pull the whole defense over with him to the right and throw back across the grain, but Greer was not fooled in the coverage in the backside. Second and 10. And Dunnigan, lots of time, has a man complete over the middle, and he's got it there to Delius Morris, and Morris is finally brought down the Hamilton 40-yard line. It's a gain of 33 yards and a Birmingham first down. And boy, with the guy that just came off a fractured index finger on his throwing hand, he put that one on a rope to Delius Morris in the seam. He sees Morris sit down right in the hole in the seam in front of the safety and throws a nice strike to Morris. Morris now with four catches for 57 yards and a first down for Birmingham just inside the 40 at the Hamilton 39. of time again has a man this time broken up by Eric Carter the corner as Carter got underneath the intended receiver and sent Manny Hazard for a spill and yeah, a nice play by Eric Carter on the coverage he's had a busy 1995 13 tackles he leads the tie cats but that usually means if you're a defensive back that they're coming after you a little bit but a nice job by Carter to break up that play and watch the block right here by Woodside on small that's a running back on a pretty big guy but he cuts down the big tree back to the live action Dunnigan has a man open again right up at the 30 yard line he gets it there to number 20 Jason Phillips this will be close to another Birmingham first down as it's right on the 30 yard line which is where they needed to get for the first down by the way that pass before that was for Marcus Grant by the way not for Manny Hazard who plays for Hamilton used to play for Birmingham Boy, Dunnigan is sure spreading out his offense. Right now, he's going with four receivers to one side of the field. He's doing misdirection plays. He's really mixing things up and keeping Hamilton off balance. And they are two links short of a first down. <laughs> the old link measurement. That's right. Two links is equal to one know. inch. I don't know. Two links. <laughs> okay. Just two links. Just short. Matt Dunnigan with 122 yards passing already. Think he's glad to be back. And so the ball just across the 30, and you'd have to think that Dunnigan will add at least a yard to his rushing total here, so he'll go likely straight ahead on third and inches. 637 to play in the opening half. 17 to 6. Birmingham leads Hamilton. And Dunnigan. Stopped at first on the second effort, gets ahead and runs behind the left side of that offensive line. Two big guys, Thomas Ram and Roosevelt Patterson. Ram at 290, Patterson at 295, both played at the University of Alabama, so this was kind of their home stadium. You know, Gordon, when you're a middle linebacker in a play like this, like Mike O'Shea, you pretty much just have to sell the farm, pick a hole, and take your best shot. And O'Shea just got a little piece of Dunnigan, not enough to hold him for the first down, but there's no hesitation on short yardage or goal line. You just have to pick a spot and throw your head in there. So a penalty called after the first down was achieved by the Barracudas. It was for unsportsmanlike conduct and will move them back to the 39-yard line. So they get a first down, but they lose 10 yards. Not often you can do that. Well, it looks like it'll be first and 10. Again, they'll reset it, start over from the 40-yard line. <laughs> so they lose 10 yards. They lose 10 yards. And Dunnigan is trying to get it all back with one throw to the end zone. It is a touchdown. Marcus Grant. 
39 yards, and Dunnigan, just like that, gets another touchdown for the Birmingham Barracudas, his second passing touchdown of the game. second touchdown of the 1995 season. Brand's already had 211 yards heading into this game. Watch a little bit of a half roll and he just lets it go deep to Marcus Grant down the sidelines. Grant's in behind the coverage of Eric Carter and perfect throw by Matt Dunnigan with the sore finger. Well, he needs some extra fingers to count up the score. 24 to 6 is now the count with 5.52 to play in the first half. And Jack Pardee said after coming over from the NFL, he loves the wide open Canadian football. And Carter has a good cushion, but a nice move there to get to the inside by Marcus Grant. And then he just fades to the football nice and done again, put it right where it have to, had to be, right on the outside shoulder. And he knows it, right? Now, I just wanted to make sure the catch, I knew that was going to happen. And let's Whoa. celebrate Birmingham. Remember you used to do that ski jumping thing in BC? Well, he had a new dance for every team he was on. Well, so he's had five then. Five dances. It's <laughs> more the Travolta. <laughs> and now, Franco Grillo, who may get worn out in his first home game, is out to kick off again for the Barracudas. But Marcus Grant, one of those four offensive players on the Birmingham roster from the University of Houston, has his second touchdown catch of the season after... Seven catches for 182 yards last week. And you know, this Hamilton defense has got to be shaking its head a little bit. Coming into this game, they were the stingiest against the run, only allowing 60 yards per carry, and or 60 yards per game, and allowing 14 points per game, and they've already given up 24 in this first half. Yeah, the Hamilton defense had only allowed two touchdowns on the season coming into this game. the kickoff back close to the 40-yard line. And that's where Hamilton will take over with 5.48 to play in the first half. Well, that 10-yard penalty sent them back to the 39, and that's where Matt Dunnigan threw that long ball to Marcus Grant for a 39-yard pass and run touchdown. And it's now 24-6 to in favor of the Birmingham Barracudas. And yes, the fans here in Birmingham are seeing plenty of offense. 30 points here in the first half. We only saw 16 in the whole game last night. <laughs> now Cavillo from the shotgun. Wide open as Earl Winfield. He dropped the ball. Earl Winfield was wide open and behind that Birmingham defensive secondary. And this is a night Earl would just as soon forget. Yeah, early in the game, Earl's dropped a couple. He dropped a couple early in the first quarter. He's open right here. Cavill throws a nice ball. Sort of has to slow down and come back and get the ball because Cavill's throwing it in the hole. But definitely a ball that Earl Winfield will catch. And he is definitely off to a slow start tonight. Brings up a second and ten now for the Ticats. Winfield is again going deep. And Cavill went right between Winfield and Frank Maroff. And... Anthony Cavillo got whacked at the end of that play. Yeah, that all that all came from Mark Ledbetter coming from the right, the left side there. He comes in on Cavillo, and just as he gets ready to throw, Ledbetter grabs that arm, and without an arm to throw, a quarterback doesn't have a chance. Good pressure by Mark Ledbetter. Two tackles, one fumble recovery for him in 1995, and a nice pressure there. You know, when you go at the stats, that's not considered a sack. But they write it down as a pressure, and it's just as important. That better the former Sacramento gold miner. Now Alisic with another low driving kick. Anthony Drawhorn up from the 35. Gets by the first wave, and here comes Drawhorn again. Alisic has to come up and make another tackle. So Hank Alisic with another low driving kick. 36 yards. And Anthony Drawhorn brought it back 23 with 4.42 to play in the first half. Dunnigan and the offense get a chance to go back to work. And Matt Dunnigan is having an impressive debut in 1995. He's got 161 yards passing already in the first half and a couple of touchdowns. And there's an injured Hamilton Ticat. 
looks to be Frank Maroff, who is down on the field on that special teams coverage. But Anthony Drawhorn's been something of a revelation tonight. He didn't return punt the last couple of years, but he's done a good job of that tonight. And he's also played some solid football in the defensive secondary. You no, know, you look back when Drawhorn was in Ottawa in BC, he was a big punt returner. In fact, in his career, he's returned punts for over 1,200 yards, but he's never scored a touchdown on a punt return. See Bell, St. Germain. Whatever happened to those breathe right things? You know, everybody was wearing those for a while. And now I don't see as many people wearing them. Well, I guess the gimmick wore off. You ever try one? No. They weren't you in didn't. they weren't in the league when I played. Because you wore every piece of equipment <laughs> that was made. You had like the forearm pad, the elbow pad, the little thing that hangs off the top of your helmet, the little mouth guard thing, the towel. <laughs> Well, you know, when you get to be th over 30 years old, like I was at the end of my career, you need every little bit of every little bit of equipment to protect yourself. You don't want to be wearing too much in this kind of heat. Folks in Birmingham are dressing for the weather. You can be sure Frank Maroff appears to be all right as he heads for the sideline. So 442 to play in the first half. And this quick strike Memphis or B Birmingham rather spread offense goes back to work. If they can get to Woodside. To the Hamilton 48 yard line for a pickup of six. Good job by Denny. He didn't see what he wanted down the field, but he's doing a nice job of moving the pocket around. Sometimes he's going to drop straight back, sometimes he drops a little to his right, and he's done some full rolls both ways. This time he didn't see the, the patterns that he wanted come open, so he took off to pick up five yards and does a smart thing to run out of bounds. The last thing he needs to do is take a hit. And on the sidelines, you can see Jude St. John being worked on as well maybe another big guy who's having problems with cramps there was early movement there no flag now there's flags down and Dunnigan has once again found his man Marcus Grant but we'll see what the flags are about holding is the call against Birmingham this is coming back penalty's finally starting to even out a little bit Birmingham, number 61 10 yard penalty second down repeat it just the third penalty of the game for the Birmingham Barracudas. Craig Gibson, the center out of USC, is called for holding. That big Craig Gibson got the holding call. He weighs in at 6'2", 270. Big boy, but hey, it's hot out there, and oftentimes when you're getting in a long time on the field like this Birmingham offense has been, you got to grab on and a couple <laughs> of plays to rest. Second and 15. Dunnigan, more holding, and Dunnigan gets whacked. He was dropped by Jesse Small, and even with the holding, the Ticats got in on the Birmingham quarterback, and Dunnigan has dropped way back at the 41-yard line. Well, Dunnigan's been doing a lot of rolling one way and trying to throw back against the grain. Holding, Birmingham, 53, decline, third down. Chris Dyko called for holding. Yeah, Dunnigan has been doing a lot of rolling to one side and then trying to throw back to the other side of the field. But this time when he went to look back, he looked right at Jesse Small at 240 pounds bearing down on him. And when, then, when you see that, all you got to do is try and protect yourself. And even though it looked like Dunnigan there was trying to do a little wrestling match with him. This, Dunnigan is a, he's a tough customer when it comes to that. He'll, he'd rather take you on. Second sack of the season for Jesse Small. Now Scott Player back to punt. once this season on a punt formation, but he kicks it away and just gets the punt away. And it's taken by Andrew Gregg up around the 35-yard line, and it's a 36-yard punt, a return of five. 331 to play in the first half, 24 to six is the score in favor of the Birmingham Barracudas. Matt Dunningham has already thrown for a couple of touchdowns. Birmingham has rushed for 66 yards, kind of like the alternate drives. They have a passing drive and a running drive. And the Thai Cats have been penalized for 105 yards already, and I'm sure that'll be brought up in the Hamilton dressing room at halftime. And Hamilton, only the, the second best team in the league coming into this game when it comes to penalties, all of a sudden got them all in this one. 10 for the Ticats from the 36. Cavillo up and gunning and has a complete over there to Kelvin Means as Means gets up to the 45-yard line. It's a pickup of nine yards. Ten catches for 105 yards in 1995 coming into this game for Means. He does a quick out there and 
Makes a nice catch on the sidelines and protects the football. You know, that's the key. When you get to that ball, you know you're going to take the hit. Put it under that arm. Make sure it's secure. So you take that hit, you don't cough it up. And on second and one, Ticats plow it straight ahead and should have the first down, but Blaine Schmidt is down on the play as Cavillo dove straight ahead and accidentally stepped on his ankle. Only the fourth first down of the football game for the Hamilton Ticats, who trail 24-6 in the first half. The 626 Kronos, no charge air, dual airbags, uh, AM FM cassette stereo, a 6040 split pull down rear seat, and Mazda's incredible five year warranty. Looks like the best family sedan in Canada. Can I borrow it? Oh, come on. I'll let you use your clippers. Hurry for no charge air conditioning or equivalent value credit. on the Indy Circuit, Canada, where top drivers and teams will be honored in Toronto. Spend some quality time off the fast track. The Molson Indy Gala, Sunday, here on TSN. Welcome back to CFL Control. Great crowd in Birmingham tonight. Matt Dunnigan and his return so far. It has been triumphant. Coming up at halftime, we will take a look at what's going on between Baltimore and San Antonio. We'll give you an update along with Glenn and Gord as they give us their analysis of the first half in Alabama. Gentlemen, so far so good for Dunning. Yeah, Matt Dunning, it looks pretty good, and this Hamilton defense is trying to figure out a way to stop. A man who has long been the nemesis of CFL defenses, Matt Dunning in his 13th season has played more CFL games than all the other Birmingham offensive players combined. Ticats offense on the field now, first and 10 from its own 47-yard line. Camille got outside, gets it to Merop. He got whacked up at the 50-yard line. Anthony Drawhorn was up to help make the stop along with Eddie Davis. The gain is four. Mike James putting some late pressure on Cavillo, and he does a really good job. We talked at the beginning of the game of Cavillo's ability to read defenses, but also if things break down, to be able to use his athletic ability to get outside. James hits him late there, but good job of buying some time by Cavill. Now second and six. Two and a half minutes to play in the first half. Goes in motion. Cavillo has time. Looking deep. Has Miroff in the hole. And tried to drop it in the middle of that zone. But it fell incomplete. Just out of the reach of Andre Strode. Number four. The defensive back out of Colorado State. And Strode did a real nice job there. Because he was in the short zone coverage. The flat coverage. But what he did is he read the play. And dropped off underneath that one. And a real smart heads up play by Strode. To help out the deep coverage in that one. Because... Cavill definitely had Merov right in the hole. And now Hank Elisic is back once again to punt. Great kick by Elisic. Draw horns. He's a bounce all the way down around the five. And now leaves it there for his teammate, Delius Morris. But he gets buried. A 55-yard punt by Hank Elisic. There are flags on the play. CFL Live on TSN. Brought to you by Subway, the place where fresh is the taste. Dan Lazarek as flags are flying here in Birmingham with 2.08 to play in the first half. They'll talk it over to that 55-yard punt by Hank Elisic. There's actually two flags in the play, one at midfield and one inside the five-yard line. And we're having a conference now up around the 27-yard line. And they're talking to the captains from both teams. <laughs> you know, Brent Maddich did a nice job of punting last night for Saskatchewan in their loss. And Hank Elisic is punting a lot the same way he does. Those low driving punts. Here's the call from Ken Lazarus. League of procedure. Five-yard penalty against Hamilton. Hold. Ten-yard penalty against Curtin. It'll be a five-yard penalty. Applied from the 
point of last scrimmage. Third down repeat at Hamilton. So we'll do it over again. But now it gets interesting because instead of being third and six, it's now third and one. And I'm not sure the Ticats realize that. Now they're gesturing towards the bench to Southern. Hey, if it's only third in the yard. Why not go for this? And the punting unit is remaining on the field for the Ticats. Hamilton used its timeout earlier. So even if they wanted to put the offense out now, the Ticats would not be able to do so. What a break for Birmingham, though. They had a pin. Hamilton had Birmingham pinned on the two-yard line. Now they're going to do it all over again. Who knows what's going to happen field position-wise. And they miss a chance for Hamilton to gamble. Alyssa gets a high kick away. This is Morris from the 20. Flags are down again. This looks like no yards against the Tabbies. There's a couple of guys right early, including Pete Giftopoulos. After a 55-yard punt was brought back, it's a 34-yard punt for Hank Alyssic. But Don Southern and company missed out a chance, perhaps, to get a first down on there to gamble on third and a yard. Yeah, Gord, that was a, that was a long no yard. yard. Hamilton, number 29, 15-yard Penley from point possession game. First down, Birmingham. Dean Noel is called for no yards. That was, a, that was a long yard for Hamilton, and I don't know if that had been a smart move to gamble in that situation anyway, but you know with that penalty and the, what happened is a difference of 30 yards in field position. Birmingham would have had the ball on the two-yard line. Now with the penalty and the extra 15 on the return, it's a 30-yard difference for Birmingham. And Dunnigan has lots of time to work here. 159 to go in the half. snap to Woodside. Dunnigan ended up giving it to him anyway, but that was kind of splitting the difference between Woodside and Dunnigan. Yeah, and we talked about Dunnigan just coming off that injury to the right hand of his, the index finger on his right hand, and watch this shotgun snap. He has to catch it with that right hand and that index finger. You know that one smarted a little bit, but he got the play executed. And two, it's second and eight. Dunnigan, all kinds of time. He's looking deep. He's got a man open, and it is a touchdown. Second time found Marcus Grant deep this time 72 yards lots of time for Dunnigan and Marcus Grant just flat out beat his man third touchdown catch of the season for Marcus Grant out of the University of Houston and Dunnigan to Grant has been a great combination in this game so far wow that was some serious Marcus Grant going down the sideline. I'll tell you why. Hamilton is in a three-deep zone defense. You should never be beat in a three-deep zone defense. Stephon Adams was assigned to the deep outside third of the field. You never let anyone get in behind you when you're in that kind of defense. It's almost a prevent situation for Hamilton. And Marcus Grant just blew by him for that touchdown. Great speed by Grant. And now Dunnigan with the hold on the point after. And Franco Grilla puts it up and good. We said there was lots of time for the Barracudas. That touchdown drive took all of 18 seconds. Second touchdown of the game for Grant. Third on the season in 1995. But watch the great speed by Grant going down the sideline. They're in his own defense. That means the halfback... Stefan Adams is supposed to be over top and deep as the deepest receiver. But he stays in his back pedal too long and Marcus Grant just takes off. The other part of that play that's supposed to help out is Eric Grant, or Eric, Eric Carter, is supposed to get his hands on Grant as he comes off the ball. But what a job by Matt Dunnigan coming back in his first game for the Birmingham Barracudas and giving these fans here in Birmingham something to cheer about. And I'll tell you what, if he keeps putting points on the board like that, they're going to be filling the stadium up. You saw Eric Carter, the corner, pointing back to Adam saying, he's by me, he's by me. But by then, it was too late, and Marcus Grant was gone for a 72-yard pass and run touchdown. Yeah, it really is a combination situation. Eric Carter is supposed to get his hands on Grant and slow up his momentum a little bit. He didn't. So he turned around to Adams and said, hey, here he comes, and he's coming fast. And boy, was Marcus Allen ever, or Marcus Grant, pardon me, ever flying down that sideline. And now with 1.41 to play in the first half, and Birmingham enjoying a 31-6 lead, the Ticats will get the ball back. Kelvin Means from the 17. And Means is buried right at the 30-yard line. 
coming up to help make the stop was Kyle Faulkner, a backup linebacker. Well, you got to like these drives. Two plays, 74 yards, 18 seconds. <laughs> they like the spread offense here in Birmingham, I think. Well, Matt Dunnigan has a game with 713 yards passing, and the rate he's going, <laughs> I know. you never know. Oh, no. You never know. Well, I'll tell you what. <laughs> Cal Murphy wouldn't stop throwing against the Edmonton Eskimos in that game a year ago yesterday, so... Why would they want to stop now? They got some tickets to sell here in Birmingham. Versus Den Tykes with 31. A little shovel pass to Kalen Hall, and he has not been much of a factor in the game so far. He got buried that time by Shante Peoples, number 56, the second year man out of Michigan. Marcus Grant, nine catches for 211 yards coming into this, and he's got five for 127 tonight. And back to the live action we go as the pass goes over the middle for Lee Knight. And Knight makes the catch for a first down for the Ticats. Up at their own 42-yard line, 120 to go in the opening half. It's a pickup of 11 for Lee Knight. That average is going to come under 30 yards now for Lee. He'll, he'll want to be careful about that. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's going he's gonna to break one pretty soon. That's what he's thinking. I'll <laughs> break one to keep my average up. And there's an injured Birmingham Barracuda. It's Shante Peoples. Now, all these new teams in the league, we got, we got to have a new contest. Who has the best uniform in the league? This is a nice one. This is a nice uniform. Those Mad Dog uniforms are all right. But you know what my favorite are? Saskatchewan Rough Rider uniform. Really? <laughs> <laughs> you were dressed like a big pickle for 11 years. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I, so, I have no comeback at this point, but I'll, I have, I still have a half to come up with one. And right now, my voicemail at TSN is exploding. <laughs> Here's Cavill for Winfield. Did he make the catch? No, he was out of bounds. Fernando Thomas was again there on the coverage, and Earl Winfield could not get the one foot down in bounds, and the pass falls incomplete. Nice call by the official. Earl Winfield definitely out of bounds when he caught that pass. Just runs a little out. Cabeal throws a nice timing pattern to the sideline, but Winfield has to go up and get it. When he comes down, both feet out of bounds. Good call by the official. Brings up second and ten now with 102 to go in the first half. Cabeal room to run he'll gun it instead and he gets it across there to Manny Hazard Hazard close to another first down we've got a late flag down this might be face masking he picked up 10 yards up to the 51 yard line he's working on Eddie Davis in the coverage and face masking is the call danger ball there but boy these Birmingham Barracuda secondary has been all over Hamilton they catch the ball that secondary right there Tommy Orr is called on the face mask now Cavill has it intercepted picked off by Mike James and James gets up to the 35 yard line Lee Knight got level on a block and a big turnover by Mike James out of Mississippi State we saw Michael O'Shea pick up Matt Dunnigan early, and it's the same sort of pattern that Mike James does. He drops back into that zone and just goes up and gets it in front of the receiver. And nice hands by Mike James. His first interception as a Barracuda. That ball goes right up on the mantelpiece. Ten tackles in 1995, but his first pick. These linebackers can catch, huh? Nice hands and pretty good verticals. <laughs> So now with 47 seconds left in the first half, Dunnigan has a chance to add to the lead, which is already 25 points. And it's the shovel pass ahead to Woodside. Lots of room for Woodside. Flags are down. And I believe this is coming back. This should be holding against Birmingham. But that was like the longest shovel pass you've seen in a while. Yeah, Thomas Rahab is going to get called for the holding. And it was not a holding. It was a tackle. Uh -huh. <laughs> holding. Birmingham, number 55, before the first down, they had 10 yards penalty from the point of last scrimmage. First down receded. Now watch number 55 to your right of your screen coming up here. It's 
this this is a straight out tackle they'll come up just to the right of your screen after the shovel pass is given up he's coming up on O'Shea and watch the big tackle and bring him down to the ground definitely a holding call Graham the left tackle out of Alabama along with the left guard Roosevelt Patterson so this is definitely a homecoming for them and of course Dieter Brox back at his stomping grounds as well Get back to Woodside out across the 30 to about the 32. He'll be a couple yards shy of the original line of scrimmage. And we mentioned Dieter Brock a moment ago. A big year for Dieter, inducted to the CFL Hall of Fame. He returns to Hamilton as an assistant coach. And now today, he's back in Birmingham, Alabama, 20 miles from his hometown. And he is another guy who needed one or two tickets to the game tonight. And you know, I, I got a chance to play against him in my rookie season in 1984, and I could no one could throw the wide field out better than Peter Brock. Now on second and 13, they set up the screen pass to Woodside, and what an open field tackle by Michael O'Shea. Keith Woodside had 15 yards of open field. O'Shea got out and made the stop. Woodside is slow getting up, but it prevented a sure first down for the Birmingham Barracudas. Yeah, I don't think that's a, an injury by Woodside. That's a little bit of pride. He had a running back. He had a big linebacker and Michael O'Shea fly out there. Great pursuit and bring down Woodside. And it's a little bit of pride. That's one of the ones in the film that he'll take a little bit of razzing. You let, you let the big linebacker run you down. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Scott Player is back to punt. Deep to receive Sam Rogers and Andrew Grigg and this should be the final play of the first half which makes you wonder why is Birmingham bothering to punt but since they set it out of bounds no harm done and it was a first half of nearly perfect execution by the Birmingham Barracudas their fans get their first look at their CFL team and it puts 31 points on the board in the first half. McDonald's Halftime, presented by your local McDonald's restaurant. Here's Darren Detition. Welcome to McDonald's Halftime. Last week, Tracy Ham terrorized the San Antonio defense. He threw for 233 yards, including two touchdowns, and ran for another 57 yards in a major. The Texans sacked him four times, but obviously couldn't contain him. Texans defensive coach Bill Bradley said, he was looking forward to the rematch. Let's see how his defense is doing as we go to the Alamo Dome. Baltimore gets things going early on. Mike Pringle. It looks like he's going all the way. He'll hit the 40, the 30. But Bobby Humphrey hammers him from behind. The fumble in the end zone. Shannon Culver recovers. It's seventh and nothing, still in the first quarter. Mike Saunders will take the pitch. He cuts it back, goes in from the 13th, his fourth touchdown of the year. That ties the game at seven. Second quarter. Archer back to pass. He'll hit Mark Stock. That's his fifth touchdown pass of the season. San Antonio leads 14 to 7. Later in the quarter, Tracy Hamm. He would drop back. Lost it to Reggie Perry. He'll make a great one-handed grab that ties the game at 14. As we have mentioned before, it is the second half of a home-and-home -home series between these two teams. A lot of animosity. It's tied 17-17 at the half. We will take a short break. McDonald's halftime returns in a moment. Hey, you want to know how to protect something? You wrap it up. You want to protect it? You wrap it up. So, you want to protect it? Wrap it up. We're in a garbage crisis. One reason McCain chose to pack their juices in these aseptic boxes rather than non-refillable glass bottles. One liter aseptic packages use 88% less material than non-refillable glass generate 85% less solid waste, consume 62% less energy. Plus, it would take 30 trucks to ship a million empty one-liter glass bottles to their factories and just two to ship the equivalent in aseptic packaging. McCain made their choice for the environment. Uh, being involved in a sport myself over the years, uh, it's more of a passion than anything else. The Canadian Championship, I think, is going to be the, the biggest race of the year. I've won seven provincial championships last year, but nationals are far more important. It's the event to show your stuff. It's the only thing that, that matters in my life, to race. Round 
eight of the 1995 Formula One World Championship from Silverstone, England. An informative pre-race show ignites the action, followed by the green light, live Sunday morning on Real TV, TSN. Welcome back to McDonald's Halftime. Let's go live to San Antonio as we join ESPN's Mike Reggie and Dan Kepley in the third quarter, tied a bit at 17. Stay in their lanes and stay wider so they don't get to really focus down on just one return guy coming up and maybe getting a great shot and creating a turnover. Chris Wright certainly burned the San Antonio special teams last week with that big 69-yard punt return. He had one against uh, BC in the opener, 58 yards for six. Tracy Ham going to work from the 45 off play action. In route, right on the money. Shannon Culver on that post went upstairs to make the grab. First down, down into San Antonio territory at about the 52-yard line. Hurry up offense by Tracy Ham. He's going to try to make a lot of things happen. But as he throws the ball, it's just a quick in, and as that receiver is running away from the defender, he creates a lot of cushion, and Tracy Ham makes no mistake about putting the ball on the money. This is an exceptional quartet of receivers for Tracy Ham. Shannon Culver, Robert Clark, Chris Armstrong, and Reggie Perry. You've seen every one of them at work tonight except Robert Clark. Ham off the waggle right, being chased threw it away no flag ham was in the grasp of san antonio's james king that big defensive end had ham in his sights now james king played this exceptionally well inside fake he's going to take it and then he wants to come outside with it but king's going to have nothing to do with it plays a good contain all he wants to do is grab a little claw gets the hands on tracy ham and forces it to throw the ball in the vicinity of reggie perry Kepi was in the grass, but obviously with Perry in the vicinity, that uh, negated Ham getting flagged for that intentional grounding. Absolutely. Second down to 10 now from the 52. Ham out of the shotgun. Guns that out route. Exceptional grab by Chris Armstrong. First down inside the 40, down to the 38. Ham was on the wrong side of Armstrong, who adjusted and made the terrific catch. Just a half sprint out to the left, and Trey sets it up really quickly, throws the ball slightly behind Armstrong. Jason Wallace, not as tight a coverage as he thought I had, or he could have made a break on that ball, maybe have knocked it down. The ball was thrown behind Armstrong, but he does an extra job of adjusting to it and brings it in for the reception. How about these two guys, huh? They played together 25 football games. Tracy Ham, Chris Armstrong, they've run up 23 TDs. First to 10 now from the 37. A delay into the middle. Ham connects with his receiver, Mike Pringle. Pringle got knocked down at about the 34-yard line. So the Ham-Pringle connection, good for four. What you're going to see is a Tracy Ham offense at his best. Nickel and dime, he's going to pick you to pieces, run the ball inside, scramble a little bit, throw the ball to the wide out, dump the ball to the backs. He is going to make you respect every weapon that he has on the offensive side of the ball. Tracy Ham is starting to heat up now after he had the very slow start in the first quarter. He did catch fire in the second quarter. You see the numbers now. At one point, he was just two for nine. Second, and let's call it five from the 33. Inside trap, Mike Pringle not going to go anywhere. The hit came from Leonard Nelson. Nelson had Pringle around the ankle and took him down short of that first down stick. Quick inside trap play. Pulled by John Earl, and all of a sudden, Nelson's not going to have anything to do with it. Trapped right behind him when the guy pulls. Get in his back pocket, and he'll take you right to the ball. That's going to send out Carlos Huerta. They're starting to call him Mr. Automatic around Baltimore. Huerta from 37 yards away on the left hash. Great addition from that Las Vegas Posse dispersal draft. Huerta again, plenty of distance, and knocks through his second field goal of the night. So Carlos Huerta continues his surge on the record books. Former Miami Hurricane gives the Baltimore Stallions 2017 lead as they get three in their first drive of the third. More coming up, CFL on ESPN. Welcome back to McDonald's Halftime. Last week when they played, Carlos Huerta five field goals in the football game. Got two more tonight. His team is ahead by three. We will take a short break. We leave you with the standings in the North and the South divisions. Stay tuned. McDonald's Halftime will continue in moments.
Our favorite product is a new product we just put on the market, and it's a Canadian-style veggie back bacon. We're creating something totally new that didn't exist before. Long distance is a major expense in our company. The Advantage uh, saving plan is much uh, more competitive, and uh, based on the last four or five years, our price has come down 35 to 40 percent. And it save us money we can reinvest in R&D and in expanding the distribution of our product. One hundred and fifteen years of tradition. One distinctive recipe. Zero preservatives. Too smooth for words. One hundred percent Canadian brewed. Five percent alcohol. Equals one good beer. It's all we do, because this bud's for you. CFL Legends, brought to you by McDonald's. He was one of the most feared defensive players in CFL history. More on Angelo Mosca in a moment. Hey amigos, here are chicken fajitas from McDonald's. They've got fresh tomatoes, green peppers and onions. Whoops, nothing rhymes with onions. So forget it, we'll sing about seasoned chicken topped with cheese and rolled in a soft tortilla shell. Chicken fajitas, two for just two ninety-nine. Two for just two ninety-nine. Two ninety-nine. Delicioso. Ooh, have you had your break today? Over his 15-season CFL career, Angelo Mosca earned a reputation as one of the most respected defensive players ever. Aggressiveness and persistence were his trademarks. An Eastern All-Star five times, a CFL All-Star three times. Mosca played in nine Grey Cup games, coming away a winner five times. Angelo Mosca, a true CFL legend. And you can see more on Mosca and other CFL legends at the Canadian Football Hall of Fame in Hamilton. McDonald's Halftime, brought to you by your local McDonald's restaurant. Welcome back to McDonald's Halftime. The Ticats could use Angela Mosca tonight. By the way, we will continue to monitor the situation in San Antonio as the Texans continue their battle with the Stallions. On now to our game story. We knew Matt Dunnigan would be back. We didn't know how effective. He's looked fantastic. 236 yards passing, three touchdowns. Grant with five receptions. 127 yards and two TDs thus far. We still have a whole half to go. The tie catch. What's with the penalties? 120 penalty yards. Hall, 12 yards offense. They've got to get Kalen Hall going. Let's go back out to the football stadium as Gordon Glenn are standing by. And hey, Gordo, take it easy on Saskatchewan. <laughs> Sorry about that, Darren, and the uniforms of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. I didn't mean to insult the host team for the 1995 Grey Cup in any way. Let's talk about uh, what's happened here to the Hamilton Ticats. We talked about the two quarterbacks, Anthony Cavillo and Matt Dunnigan, and Cavillo came in as the leading passer in the Canadian Football League. He's had not a bad evening. He's passing at 50%, but Matt Dunnigan at 65%, 236 yards already, and three touchdowns. He is shredding, Glenn, the CFL's number one defense, and I wonder if you're at all surprised. Well, just because of his injury, I'm a little surprised that he's throwing the ball so well. He's putting a lot of zip on the football, and this is a guy who had a fracture in the index finger of his passing hand, but Matt Dunnigan is a competitor. This is his first game in Birmingham. He's got new fans that he wants to impress, and he takes it upon himself to make things happen for this football team. Now, is this a case of the Hamilton defense perhaps having a letdown after two good weeks? It really isn't. The Hamilton defense isn't playing that badly, but Matt Dunnigan is playing exceptionally well, and Marcus Grant is having a great game as well. And other than a couple of mistakes and some penalties by Hamilton, it really is Dunnigan. It has been Dunnigan so far, and if history is any indication, he won't let up in the second half. Darren? Thanks very much, gentlemen. That's uh, Barracuda. He's a fish out of water. Matt Dunnigan on fire tonight. Stay tuned. We're back with more in moments. Do you remember your first Pepsi? 1926 at Homer's General Store. Pepsi number two, cheap seats. Wrigley Field. Pepsi 812, the stock market crash. Pepsi 3922, spam was invented. 14,030, your dad repeated third grade. And this is Pepsi 21,004, Kathy. 
Kelly. Kelly? Kelly. I knew that. I think I knew that. St. Andrews in Scotland. The mystique and tradition of the British Open. Gulf's elite from around the globe are set to challenge for the most prized trophy in the game. The 1995 British Open. Coverage begins Thursday, July 20th. Gulf's Majors only on TSN. Matt Dunnigan had one of the better halves of his great career. And you remember Dunnigan was injured after 11 games last year. Rehab the injured leg, injured his index finger in a freak training camp injury where his finger came into contact with a teammate's helmet. And Matt Dunning is making up for lost time with 236 yards passing in the first half. And here are the numbers from the first half. 303 net yards for the Barracudas to 130 for Hamilton. 11 penalties for the Ticats for 120 yards. Turnovers have not been a major factor, but Birmingham has twice as many first down. And something that doesn't show up in the stats, Gord, is the, fa is the fact that Anthony Cavill has had some passes dropped. Earl Winfield in the first half dropped three passes. One was a sure touchdown that bounced right off his shoulder pad. So that's something that doesn't show up in the stats, and it's an incompletion for the quarterback, but a couple of dropped passes on Cavill. And you can be sure that Don Southern had a few choice words for his football club before the start of this second half and the Birmingham Barracudas who won the coin toss to open the football game deferred their choice to the second half and they'll take the football to begin the third quarter. Paul is Baldiston to kick it off and the flags are still now here in Birmingham. Not much of a breeze. The wind was blowing from left to right as we looked at it. So far the thunderstorms have held off. The kickoff is taken deep. By number 85, Delius Morris. And Morris has a C. Morris back up through the middle. And Morris still going up across the 50. He's finally brought down there. The tackle is made in the open field by Derek Greer, number 20, a 68-yard kickoff, a return of 43 yards. Great return by Delius Morris. And uh, Delius Morris is a good kick returner for this team. They're all rookies, though. And this is surprising that these rookies for the Birmingham Barracudas doing so well. The only veteran in this whole receiving core is Derek Crawford. Rest, this is their first year in the league. <laughs> and Derek Crawford has been slowed somewhat tonight by a hamstring pull. He's got one catch tonight for 16 yards. Now checking into the game is number 86, Ted Long. Birmingham only dressed one backup receiver in the football game, and so when Derek Crawford went down, they were pretty thin. First and 10 from the 50. And Dunningham, guess what? He's throwing deep. And there's no chance for that to be completed. He was looking deep for Jason Phillips, number 20. But the coverage was there all the way from Don Robinson, number 16. Talking about another guy who uh, came over from Las Vegas who played, played there in 1994 and recorded a couple of interceptions for the posse. And real nice coverage there. And it looks like the Hamilton defense has just decided to say, listen, he's going to throw deep every chance he gets. We don't cover him. This, score, this scoreboard clock is going to be lighting up all night. Now on second down for Dunnigan again from the shotgun. And here comes the rush. He's dumping it underneath, and Keith Woodside dropped the pass as they were trying to set up the screen pass, and it falls incomplete. So Matt Dunnigan is finally stifled by this Hamilton defense, and the punter, Scott Player, will have to come out. And Scott Player's got to be thinking, if Matt Dunnigan keeps playing like this, I might have the best job in football. <laughs> yeah, he hasn't seen too much of the, of the football field, but that's the way they like it here in Birmingham. They'd rather see those field goals or those long touchdown strikes by Dunnigan than a then the punter strolling onto the field, that's for sure. So player steps out there, and the Tie Cats down by 25 points. Need to get something going quickly here in the second half. As their defense, which has kept them in the first two games and helped them win decisively, has been torched here tonight. The punt is taken at the 22-yard line by Sam Rogers, and Rogers 
gets up to the 33-yard line. It's a 38-yard punt and a return of five. And we've got a quarterbacking change for the Hamilton Ticats. Here comes veteran Mike Kerrigan into the football game, a free agent signing. Last year, he was the marquee player for the Toronto Argonauts. And, of course, Mike Kerrigan, well-remembered in Hamilton for directing them to the Grey Cup Championship back in 1986. This is his 100th game as a Hamilton Ticat tonight. And on first down, Kerrigan waited and got belted. Angelo Snipes got in there, so did Shante Peoples. And welcome to Birmingham, Mike Kerrigan. This is how the Barracudas play defense. Talk about that Vegas connection. Shante Peoples, 14 sacks for the posse last, last year in 1994. And boy, Kerrigan takes that three-step drop, but the pocket just collapses on him. And Peoples over the top of number 61 on the play. And in St. Jude, or St. John, rather. And what a great play by Peoples. It's a loss of eight, make it second and 18. Kerrigan with time, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Fernando Thomas, and he may take it all away. Fernando Thomas, touchdown, Birmingham. 41 yards. Mike Kerrigan, sacked on first down, intercepted on second. And the Barracuda defense gets into the act two. Just visit the keg and sink your teeth into a juicy keg steak or cool down with a refreshing Lipton Original Iced Tea. Fill out a ballot and enter it into the specially marked ballot box. Then, dream about your chance to win this classic beauty. Or you could win a free keg dinner during the Keg 69 Classic Camaro Contest. It's hot. What, what are you doing Sunday? There's like 25 games going on. Nothing but reruns. The grass needs cutting, but the game's on TSN. Expos Jays, doubleheader, TSN, Sunday. Get revved with the explosive Players Limited Indy Car Racing Series. The roar makes its way to the airstrip in Cleveland for the Cleveland Grand Prix. Live Sunday, July 23rd. The wheels are turning right here on Real TV, TSN. CFL Live, brought to you in part by The Keg, where good friends get together to enjoy great steaks and share some fun. Well, it's been that kind of evening for the Ticat quarterbacks. Mike Kerrigan comes into the football game, gets sacked on first down, and here's what happened on second. Yeah, he's in the shotgun, and Earl Winfield runs an out. Kerrigan's throwing a timing pattern. He thinks he's going in, just miscommunication. And Johnny on the spot is Fernando Fernando Thomas, who takes it into the end zone on the interception. But he just happened to be in the right place at the right time. But you know, when it comes down to stats, they all look the same. That's an interception and a touchdown. Hey, Angelo Snipes passed up a chance to level Mike Kerrigan, too. I mean, he was a target there. And Snipes held up. I guess he felt Kerrigan felt bad enough. And now the score, 38 to 6 in favor of Birmingham. And the kickoff is taken deep by Andrew Grigg at the 18-yard line. Flags are down, and so is Grigg as he's brought down to the 30-yard line. A kickoff of 60 yards and a return of 10. And for the Ticats, who came into this game at 2-0 and, oh and soaring, it's been an evening of penalties, mistakes, and overwhelming Birmingham offense. Yeah, they sure started out strong the first two games of the season. Everything going right defensively. They're number one in the league in points given up. Offensively, number one in the league in 
yardage and it's all falling apart tonight but it's not it's not necessarily because they're playing poorly more that holding Hamilton number 59 10 yard penalty from point of foul not necessarily making a lot of mistakes except for these penalties they're not making a lot of mistakes but the Barracudas are taking the play to them and now they get a chance to take the play to them a lot deeper in Hamilton territory as the penalty moves the tie cats back to their own 17 yard line by the way are you noticing Ken Lazarus is giving very detailed descriptions of the penalties tonight I guess he's trying to help explain it to the new CFL fans here in Birmingham Mike Kerrigan back out there. It can only get better from here. Flags are down. No, and he's intercepted again. Kerrigan picked off by Anthony Drawhorn. Mike Kerrigan is 0 for 2 with two interceptions, but there are flags down. Maybe Kerrigan will get a break, and it doesn't look as though he will. Man, what a start for Mike Kerrigan. Well, that was just a ball he shouldn't have thrown. Hamilton, seven, decline. First down, Renner. Hamilton's last three passes have been intercepted. Cavillo's last throw was picked off, and Kerrigan's first two were intercepted as well. And Don Southern really doesn't have more, any more in the bullpen to go to, but this is just a pass that Kerrigan shouldn't have thrown. He had safety low with Anthony Drawhorn playing down in the curl route in the zone defense. He tried to force it in there through Drawhorn. <laughs> Drawhorn comes up with the easy interception, but really two balls that Kerrigan shouldn't have let go. And with a 32-point lead, Dunnigan naturally from the shotgun. Down to the 10, and it is incomplete as he was looking down there for Phillips. And Jason Phillips unable to make the catch. He had a 96-yard touchdown in the opening week against the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. And yeah. another player out of the University of Houston. Sorry, Gordy. Yeah, three catches for 103 yards coming into this game for Phillips. And that's really the first imperfection from that Birmingham offense we've seen all game. The Ticats with three turnovers, and it's not like Birmingham has needed the help tonight. On second down, again, Dunnigan from the shotgun. Three receivers to the short side of the field. Dunnigan's rolling wide, looking to the end zone. Crawford, and it is almost intercepted. Derek Greer got back to cover Derek Crawford, and it's Greer who almost got his hands on the football. And look at Matt Dunnigan. He's upset. <laughs> Sorry, Matt, you're only passing 60%. <laughs> Yeah, that was just a great play by Derek Greer. He's he's been playing behind Les Brown in BC for two years. Comes over to Hamilton this year, so he's learned from the best. And Greer just fades back with the receiver and Crawford gets his hands up and really should have come down with the interception. He's shaking his head because he knows he should have had that for the interception. But good coverage by Greer. And Derek Greer apparently set the record for tickets. He needed 38 for the game. He's from Atlanta, <laughs> a couple of hours down the highway. So now we'll have a field goal try for Franco Grilla from the 31-yard line. And Dunnigan to hold. Dunnigan gets it down, and Grilla puts it through. 41-6 to is the score in favor of the Birmingham Barracudas. When we come back, we'll be joined by former Toronto Argonaut, Rod Reg Holloway. At the keg, we welcome you to be our guest for a night of fun, steaks on the grill, and lots of juicy details. That's why people keep coming back to the keg. Great steaks, good friends. Yeah. See you tonight. Being a pilot, it's not just handling the stick controls, it's, it's what goes on up here. I'd say I tend to be a detail sort of person. In, in this business, if you don't pay attention to detail, you're dead. In this past year, we've done training for people from uh, both the U.S. and Canada. Our Advantage 800 number gives us the opportunity to reach these people who are spread over North America. It gives us a, an instant credibility, and it puts us in the major U.S. competitors, the big boys, if you want. Dunnigan is poised to pass Tom Clements perhaps tonight for second on the all-time passing list. He's the number three quarterback all-time. The offensive coordinator for Hamilton is the fourth leading passer all-time. That's Dieter Brock behind that first down marker there. And the number 11 all-time passer in the Canadian Football League is standing right between 
Glenn and me. And it's Conrad Holloway, the former Toronto Argonaut and Ottawa Rough Rider. Delighted to have you with us. 25,193 yards passing. What do you think of the CFL in Alabama? Did you ever think you'd see it? Oh, yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm really excited to see it, and I'm glad to see Matt having such a good day. But uh, you, as you can see, uh, fans are really excited about football in this city. And I, I was one of the ones standing outside. Before the game started, there were quite a few people standing out trying to get tickets, so I think they'll rectify that. But there's a, there's a niche for football in this city. And we've got early movement as Mark Ledbetter went offside. And Conrad, what are you up to these days? Well, I, uh, you probably get a chuckle out of this, but I'm uh, working for a hockey franchise in Huntsville, Alabama. We call it Huntsville Channel Cats. Brand new uh, uh, hockey league is called the Southern Hockey League. Lou Corletto is our commissioner, and uh, I got a chance to get a front office job there, and I'm really enjoying it. It's uh, been a lot of fun. So all those years watching the Toronto Maple Leafs, you're, you're now a hockey authority. Just when you think you get out of Canada, they pull you right back in. <laughs> and I love it. I love it. I think it's great. No, I'm not a hockey authority by any means, but uh, I'm learning. First down looking for Earl Winfield, and did Earl make the catch? He was able to make the grab right near the first down marker at the 46-yard line. Dieter Brock was telling me before the game that the game has changed a lot since he left, a lot of six receiver sets. How much of a change have you noticed? Well, it hasn't changed that much to me because the run-and-shoot style is something that I got a chance to do at Toronto with Mouse Davis and Bob Bilovich, and, and that's basically what's going on here now. And, uh, you know, when you, when you run that type of offense and have the kind of receivers that Matt has, you better do something other than being a vanilla defense to he'll bomb you just like he's doing. On first down, it's Kerrigan over the middle, picked off again. Third pass that's been intercepted. It's picked off by Andre Strode. And it is an absolute nightmare evening for the Hamilton Ticats. And Mike Kerrigan goes back to the sidelines, and it's time for the Ticats maybe to go back to the drawing board, but... <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Conrad? Do you think he threw it a little bit behind him? <laughs> that, was a, that, that wasn't real good, but, you know, I've, I've been in that situation, and I know Mike, and what, when it happens like this, you just got to keep dropping back, keep throwing it. He, what he's doing right now, he's getting, he's getting confused with coverage. He's not throwing the ball. He sees something, but he's not seeing what he really sees. He's looking at a zone. He's trying to throw a man ball, and it's just not working. And so Dunnigan will go back to work from his own 51-yard line. And Dunnigan gets away from the rush. Dunnigan has a man wide open. It's complete up there to Woodside. And Woodside tripped up inside the 40 at the 36-yard line. But Stefan Adams prevented Keith Woodside from getting an even bigger gain as it was. The pickup was 22. This had a nice decleater right here. Watch this. <laughs> Kaboom. One of those crackback blocks you don't see coming. Receivers love to get it when they get their running back in the flat. That's the decleater. The cleats are straight up in the air. <laughs> Well, how does a quarterback know about that? <laughs> I've been on the opposite end of many of those, believe me. That's Jim Corbin. <laughs> First and ten for the Barracudas from the 37. Dunnigan guns a one hopper. He's looking in there for Jason Phillips. Birmingham bills itself as the football capital of the South, but they've been burned before, Connie, by other leagues, the World Football League, the USFL, the WLAF. Do you think fans here might take a wait-and-see attitude? Well, I think they might, but I do also know that they've been trying uh, very, very strongly to get a some type of professional football here and one thing you've got to understand about football here now it's post bear bryant days and that was a major factor before bear bryant kind of controlled the football in this state and he's no longer with us he's a great coach and a great man but uh, the post bear bryant days professional football has a place in Birmingham. Pennington dumps it off to Keith Woodside, who gets five yards. And there is a statue of Blue Hair outside the stadium, which, of course, has been the site of so many battles between Auburn and Alabama and Tennessee and Alabama. Tennessee and Alabama, too. So I guess you got down here and played once in a while, huh? I've been beat up on this field before. <laughs> yes, I have. But uh, it was it was a big rivalry, Tennessee, Alabama, and got to play against some great people. Uh, one of them, of whose I see his, his wings uh, signs up there, Bob Baumhauer, who was uh, one of the players I played against the win. You know, they're Wilbur Jackson, a lot of great players. And an old teammate of yours is here tonight, too. And Terry yeah. Greer, we'll have to talk about that in a moment. we got a field goal try here from Franco Grilla from the 38-yard line. Cunningham gets it down, and Grilla finally misses. As it's down deep in the end zone, the Ticats will surrender another point. This will make it 42-6. to 
in favor of the Birmingham Barracudas. You and Terry Greer, a lot of people would give you a lot of credit for ushering in the new age of the Canadian Football League in the run and shoot. Well, I was very fortunate to have a receiver like Terry Greer. He was a guy that I, I had a similar guy in Stanley Morgan when I was in college, but we didn't have the same type of offense. And with a run and shoot offense with Miles Davis give it, giving us guidance, Terry Greer was very important to me. And he was a guy that just uh, exuded confidence. I mean, if you double teamed him and you didn't get a good bump on him, he was open. And I made him feel that way, and he made me feel that way, and I always threw the ball to him. And I can still remember his over 2,000 yard season, and uh, that was just fantastic to go through that. That still stands as one of the great records in the Canadian Football League in a 16 game season, 2,000 yards. Camillo's back in, he's got Winfield wide open, and Earl Winfield down the 40 eludes four Birmingham tacklers. Earl Winfield still going, is finally brought down at the 32 yard line. And so finally, the Hamilton offense gets on track as Cavill comes back in and hooks up for 43 yards with Earl Winfield. Yeah, and Earl Winfield, he gets his own defense, and you got a deep guy and a guy up short in the flat. And what Cavill wants to do is try and hit it right in the hole. He does to Winfield, and then Winfield does what he does best, and that's avoid a few tackles and get a couple extra yards on the play. But finally, a little bit of something positive for Hamilton. Well, it's amazing what you can do when you get a little time. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> now Cavill with the shovel pass to Kalen Hall, and there's that elusive running back getting all the way down to the 20-yard line. It's a pickup of 11 yards for little Kalen Hall. You look back at the Toronto Argonauts team you played for, Connie, in the early 80s. You won the Grey Cup back in 1983. What's your greatest memory from those years in Toronto? Well, I, I guess the first year was a 2-14 and 14 season. And I guess the greatest memory I'll ever have is having that same bunch of players come back the next year and uh, go to the Grey Cup, even though we got beat by Edmonton. But we, we didn't quit even after a 2-14 and 14 season. And we ended up being a winner, winners as a group. Now Cavillo going to the end zone. It's incomplete for Manny Hazard. The coverage there provided by Andre Strode. And Cavillo comes back in for Mike Kerrigan with a nightmarish turn off the bench. And Manny Hazard, a former Toronto Argonaut as well, just couldn't get his hands on this ball. A little bit of a combination pattern in man-to-man -man defense. And Manny Hazard's going to run the corner route. He gives a little push to get some separation from the defensive back, but just can't get the handle on the football. And Boy, Anthony Cavill right now needs a couple of big catches out of receivers because he has had some drops. You got to catch that. <laughs> you got to catch. Oh. After, after four interceptions, you got to catch. You got to make the big catch for your quarterback. <laughs> That's right. Now second down from the 20. Cavill to the end zone. Winfield and Winfield can't get to that one. So Earl Winfield, well covered in the play by Fernando Thomas, the first-year man out of Southwest Louisiana, who has been with one of the CFL's best receivers, step for step, all night long. Again, Earl Winfield working on the one-on-one. -on -one. This is where Birmingham has had success. A little bit of bump and run coverage. Winfield gets in behind. He's seen that a lot of times in his career, but just can't get to the football. And boy, Hamilton really needs a big play in this in this instance to get some momentum. And Anthony Cavill has just waved off any idea of field goals, and he wants to go for this. Third and ten from the twenty. Three receivers to the near side of the field. Cavill goes the other way, right to the ten-yard line. Now the ball comes loose. They completed the pass to Manny Hazard, but he lost the football, and Birmingham gets it back. And Andre Strode, who made that play in the end zone, came up with the fumble recovery. 5-11 to play in the third quarter. It's all Birmingham in Alabama. It's hot off the grill. The Keg 69 Classic Camaro Contest. To get your share of the action, just visit the keg and sink your teeth into a juicy keg steak or cool down with a refreshing Lipton Original Iced Tea. Fill out a ballot and enter it into the specially marked ballot box. Then, dream about your chance to win this classic beauty. Or you could win a free keg dinner during the keg 69 Classic Camaro Contest. It's hot. Hey, do you know what conditioners can do for your hair? Got me. What if I told you they help hair stay in control and smooth flyaways? Conditioners do that? That's right. And now, Pert Plus Shampoo and Conditioner in One has been reformulated with customized conditioners designed specifically for your hair type. So you get hair that's clean and more manageable than with a regular shampoo. You know, I think I could get used to this. New Pert Plus, customized conditioning that's right for you. 
back in Birmingham. Matt Dunnigan under pressure on second down. Gets away from the rush. Dunnigan's getting outside. He's got a ways to go for the first down, so he throws it. And Keith Woodside has a Birmingham first down out to the 24-yard line. Again, the 14, and Matt Dunnigan has not missed a step. You're hot, you're hot. I tell you, Matt's doing everything right right there. And that's a good sign of a good veteran quarterback that take, buys a little time by getting outside instead of trying to pull it down, hits an open receiver. Doesn't take that hit, he'll play another year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I saw you do that a few times in your career, kind of. <laughs> well, you, you, you learn, the, early in the career, I probably would have taken off and gotten the 10 yards and taken a hit or something, but then later in your career, you learn to do just what Matt did and prolongs your career, and, uh, <laughs> and it still goes under, because they don't pay you to run it, they pay you to throw it, and uh, the stats better on the, the receiver. And we have an injured player down on the field for the Hamilton Ticats. Number 16, Don Robinson. Let's take you back to that third down gamble and the pass to Manny Hazard. A nice shot by Cavill to hit Hazard right over the middle, but then he just gets the ball stripped right there by Stroden. He's fighting for more yards. And you know, sometimes when you got that first down, and when he did the curl, you got that first down, just get down, you got the ball, secure the first down, and you got another play, but ball gets stripped. Another turnover for Birmingham. And speaking of injured quarterbacks, more from Darren Detition. Thanks very much, Gord. All ex-quarterbacks hate to see this. Tracy Ham drops back in the pocket. And Tommy Smith levels him. It's a hard shot to the ribs. Ham had to leave the game. He's out. Sean Jones is in. It's now tied 23-23. Back in Birmingham. Hope y'all like the grits. I tried grits this morning. And? <laughs> I think it's an acquired taste, honey. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. I would say that. On first down from the 23, Dunnigan swings it out again for Keith Woodside. And Woodside gets out to the 28-yard line. It's a pickup of four yards. Now, Connie, when you played, there was a lot of five receiver sets, but I mean, we talk about a guy, Matt Dunnigan, who had 713 yards passing in a game last year. I, that was amazing. I mean, I, I would have liked to witness that, but uh, <laughs> I tell you, when you when you can get the CFL is tailor-made for motion and people on one side because you get a first-hand look at what your defense is doing, and, it, and when you get a pre-snap look as a quarterback, I mean, half of your job is done. Then you can be in control as to where you look and how you look people off and where you're going to go with the ball because before the ball snap, you know where you're going to go. So then you get a chance to play with the defense. An injured player for the Hamilton Ticats. It's Sam Rogers, number 31 from UTEP, the University of Texas in El Paso. A lot of guys from Texas playing here with the Birmingham Barracudas. This is a good opportunity for a lot of guys who play in the Southeast and Southwest Conference to get a chance to play pro football. Well, that's true. And one thing about it also, they're well adapted to this weather. It is hot out there. Oh, tell, tell me about it. Now, you're, <laughs> now, wait a minute. You're standing here in shorts. Yeah. A, nice, a nice print shirt. Yeah. For those of us, you know, the polar bears from uh, from Canada, this is a little tough for us. 107, that's pretty tough. Oof, and humid. Yes, that, that's the tough part of the humidity. And you can see the, the fellows downstairs that have to wear that extra jacket aren't appreciative of the hot weather either. <laughs> and you got to think, too, in terms of Birmingham situation, when the weather cools off a little bit, their attendance is likely to go up some, too. Well, it'll cool off. It'll probably get around 75. <laughs> oh, I have, to, I have to bring my park up. <laughs> Second and six now for the Birmingham Barracudas with Matt Dunning on the controls and Keith Woodside heading off now. And Woodside is... Replaced now by number 20, Jason Phillips. And with Derek Crawford limping somewhat, Birmingham's a little shorthanded on offense. Crawford's out there now, lined up on the near side. There was early movement. And the give goes now to Phillips. He's out of bounds. And from he's stopped behind the play and has to throw the ball down. Now, we mentioned a moment ago in old pal years, I say we get you, Terry Greer, and Dieter Brock out there with Glenn. Well, we'll give a touch football. What do you say? Hey, yeah. <laughs> as, as long as nobody's hitting me, I can handle that. Suda was a safety. Wait a minute, wait a minute. <laughs> Terry Greer, Conrad Holloway, and Dieter Brock, I'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> that kind of confidence trouncing I don't need. <laughs> yeah, just a little short distance from Unitarians, about 10 yards, just a yeah. first down down there. Huh? That's right, it's good to see him. There he is over there. I see him. I see Terry Greer. I start backpedaling immediately. <laughs> I tell you, he, he exudes confidence in me, I tell you. Yeah. Off it, offside was the call against the Baltimore, the uh, Hamilton defense, and as a result, it's second and a yard, but pretty close. Donald Moffitt may not have gotten there on second down. 
42 to 6 is the score with 248 to play in the third quarter on a hot and muggy night in Birmingham Alabama at Legion Field where Alabama and Auburn wage war every other year and where next year the Olympic soccer tournament will be held and there'll be plenty of Olympic activity in this area and of course in Atlanta where they're anticipating a big boost and it could be hot for the Olympics next oh, yeah. year. Alabama Tennessee will be here this year. Too. Is that right? Will you yeah. be down for that? I will be here. I will be here. It's about time we they plan it on the second Saturday in uh, October instead of the third Saturday. So uh, maybe this might be our turn. That's the, that's the charm, is it? That must be it. Scott Player back to butt for Birmingham. And a good kick. This is the Hamilton returner all the way back to the 20. Derek Greer steps out of bounds up around the 38-yard line. Well, we're delighted to have Hall of Famers all around and great quarterbacks who put up lots of yards on the field and in the booth. Conridge Hallway, thanks for stopping by. Great to see you. Thank you for giving me the opportunity. I appreciate it. All right, Conridge, now living in Huntsville, Alabama, where he is, yes, a hockey executive. <laughs> a what hockey else, executive. What else would you be in Huntsville, hey, Alabama? Hey, if Mike can try baseball, I can try. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Thanks very much, Conridge. Thank you. Conrad Holloway, our guest. And he'll now head over, I think, say hi to Terry Greer. Look out, they might come down here and come out of retirement for the second half here. And now Cavillo sends it out to the sidelines and a great catch made by Frank Maroff right down at the 54-yard line. Maroff got the foot down and got enough for a Hamilton first down, a pickup of 13 yards. Something positive for his quarterback, and those are the catches that Cavill haven't got for the majority of this football game. You know, the ones that are just near the fingertips have gone through the fingertips for Hamilton, and that one, finally, Maroff makes a nice catch for him. And Cavillo's got decent numbers today, 19 for 34, but the other guy has outgunned him. Now Cavillo gets it over the middle for Lee Knight, and that average is going up because the big man rumbles all the way down to the Birmingham 26-yard line. And for Lee Knight, who came into the game averaging 32 yards a catch, <laughs> it's a gain of 30. Well, we talked about that earlier. We said that, you know, he, he caught that little one. We thought that might hurt his average. But, you know, he's, he's baited for the next uh, the next big 30, 40-yarder. And he, what he's doing is he's just sneaking out of the backfield and hitting the seam in between the linebackers for those big gains. Well, a little thing, something positive for Hamilton. Four catches for 70 yards today, so he's nearly 20 yards a catch today. Al Cavillo on first down. Complete, and Winfield was covered by his shadow, Fernando Thomas. By the way, we can let you know in San Antonio, Tracy Ham has returned to the game for the Baltimore Stallions. Good news for them. Boy, some real good man-to-man -man coverage, guys, in this uh, Birmingham defensive secondary. Fernando Thomas had an interception earlier. He's been all over Earl Winfield all game and been giving him all kinds of trouble trying to get over. But this whole secondary, all young. Tommy Oates in the corner. Andre Strode, number four of the halfback. All rookies. Eddie Davis, a rookie as well. And, of course, Fernando Thomas. So for a young secondary to be able to cover a guy like Earl Winfield, his ability in this ball game, you got to be impressed with the way they're playing, and that all, all partially due to uh, a little bit of pressure up front as well. Donovan Gant is the injured Birmingham Barracuda. You see Cavill try and throw back to his number one guy, Earl Winfield, but watch the hand fighting that's going on between Fernando and Winfield trying to get the ball, and he just rips that right hand down. Here comes, you can see the pressure here. Oof, and some big time hitting going on. So you want to be a quarterback in the CFL? That's some of the hits you got to take. I remember Conrad Holloway used to wear that flak jacket. It was like a parka. Yeah, you know, Conrad Holloway was another guy that came out on the field all the time, limping and running all over you. <laughs> like, you, you'd get hit and it looked like he was dead, and then he'd get up and throw for 100 yards on you. Second and 10 from the 25. Gavillo thought screen pass, thought better of it. End zone and incomplete. As he was looking up there for Kelvin Means, and the pass went through his hands right underneath the goalpost. And again, Anthony Cavillo took a whack, and again, he waves off the putting unit. He wants to gamble on third and ten. Well, I am so impressed with Cavillo. Young guy, 22 years old, throws a ball in there that should have been caught by Means, and it's been like that all game for Cavillo. You can't blame the quarterback, although that'll go against his statistics. He's had a bunch of those dropped, and he's standing in there and taking a pounding and still delivering the football. And on third and ten, the Tie Cats will gamble. Cavillo. Or to the end zone. Winfield. Touchdown. Earl Winfield. 
with his third touchdown of the season. And it's one that moves him into 16th place on the CFL's all-time touchdown list. It covers 25 yards, and the Ticats get their first major with 36 seconds left in the third quarter. Yeah, finally, Cavill gets the payday. He gets the coverage he wants in man-to-man -man and throws it up and over Fernando Thomas, the young cornerback, and Earl Winfield makes a catch for him. But, boy, it's been a struggle. He finally gets the payday for for all the beating he's been taking in that pocket. And now, Hamilton will try for two. Cavillo quickly. Lee Knight into the end zone. He's got the Duke. So 42-14 is the score with 21 seconds to play in the third quarter. Now just a 28-point lead. So four converted touchdowns for the Birmingham Barracuda. Just called a quick hitter. And they just try and get uh, Knight open and just get it to him quick because linebacker Mike James had not adjusted and made his alignment onto uh, Knight. He picks up the two points. Something positive for Hamilton to build on in eight. Remember, it's a CFL. We still got a quarter to play. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure all oh, Matt Dunning will want to do now is come out throwing from the shotgun. Well, provided they can do something about that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the focus might be on the Hamilton defense right now. As Hank Alyssa gets set to kick off for the Hamilton Tiger Cat. 21 seconds to play in the third quarter. Oh, what a job, what a pounding Cavillo has taken in this football game. Good pressure by Birmingham all game, and Earl finally comes up with a big catch for him. He dropped a few early in the first half. He dropped a sure touchdown in the first quarter, but not this time. He's going to just run through the seam of the in the defense and concentrate on the ball and those are sometimes tough to catch you got a guy in front of you you're trying to keep concentration Earl's dropped a couple today and he makes a catch for his quarterback there well if Earl had dropped that one we might have seen a repeat of the Woody Hayes incident in the bowl game where he slugged one a player now we've got a short kick and that might be Hamilton football it is as the ball went out of bounds it was deflected by a Hamilton player it looked to be number 26 Brian McCurdy a backup defensive back who got his hand on it and if that's the case that's a Hamilton first down <laughs> okay now I was saying this is the CFL we're still a quarter to play and Cavill still throwing the ball and standing in there and they get they kind of get Birmingham napping on the on, on the onside kick and both Greer and uh, McCurdy over there to bat it out of bounds and boy if Cavill can do something with the ball now it's it's a new ball game and it was McCurdy who got his hand on it first and 10 for the tie Cats from their own 51 yard line and it's Kalen Hall on the shovel pass and he gets collared high across midfield he gets down to the Birmingham 52 yard line Angelo Snipes got his hand on him. It's the final play of the third quarter. So the Tie Cats have just scored a touchdown, and they've got the ball back. 42 is to 14 is the score after three quarters of play. Let's send you back now to CFL Control. Welcome back to CFL Control. Once again, Tracy Ham has rejoined the Baltimore Stallions. He is back in the game. The contest was tied at 23. It has become a field goal affair, at least in the second half. And this is a costly error for the San Antonio Texans. They give up the safety. Jordan can't handle the snap. He was supposed to punt it away. Instead, he kicks it through the end zone. That makes it 25-23 in the fourth quarter of play. The Montreal Expos are back in action tonight. They lead Philadelphia by a score of 5-2 in the seventh inning of play. Butch Henry got the start in this baseball game. He went into the contest 3-5 with a 3.73 ERA. A little later tonight in the Kingdom, it is Seattle's Randy Johnson. He's 9-1 on the season. 40 strikeouts in his last four starts. Pat Henkin gets the pleasure of going up against him. It's 11 o'clock start, Eastern time. Our next game, is this going to be a dandy on TSN? You've got the BC Lions and the Calgary Stampeders. BC, the perfect 3-0. The Stamps, the perfect 3-0. They will clash next Friday night. We will have that game here for you on the Sports Network. It is a 9 o'clock start, Eastern time. That's got the makings of a great one. back 
back here in Birmingham. 42-14 is the score for the Barracudas in their home debut against the Hamilton Ticats. And you wouldn't want these Birmingham fans to go unhappy in the first game and see their team blow a 28-point lead, would you? The numbers through three quarters of play widely favoring the Birmingham Barracudas, as you might expect, but not as wide as it was at the half. 348 net yards to 273, but four turnovers by the Ticats and 14 penalties. And you know, Gord, those turnovers by the Ticats really aren't, I mean, they came late in this game in the third quarter. A couple of interceptions by Mike Kerrigan, but really the true story of this game is Matt Dunnigan and the way he's throwing that football and the way he's done it for three quarters. But now we've got a little bit of a change in momentum and a quarter to play with Hamilton having the ball after that onside kick. And anything can happen in the CFL. Okay. <laughs> Ticats have it. Second and short. Make it two yards from the Birmingham 52-yard line. And the give goes to Kalen Hall, and Hall had to cross the 50 to get the first down. It appears he's very close to it. Really impressed with the job that the Birmingham defense has done on Kalen Hall. Really not a real pro productive day for him. Big Angelo Snipes in the middle of everything again, as he is usually in uh, this Birmingham defense. <laughs> Just creates a foul right there. Nowhere, nowhere for Galen all the run. He didn't get there. It's third and a yard, and Cavillo, again, again, it was Snipes creating the pile, and Cavillo looks to have gotten there this time, but a tough way to get a yard when you got guys flying in at the end of the play and taking a shot at your head. Yeah, and Anthony Cavill has taken some big hits tonight, standing in that pocket and throwing balls, and then as he's lying on the ground after the big hit, he's watching his receivers drop them. So a rough night for Anthony Cavill. Hey, this is going to be close. They didn't get the gravy spot. I, got, I don't think they got there. They didn't. Birmingham stopped him on third and a yard. And so after the short kickoff is recovered by Hamilton, the Barracudas stop Hamilton twice from a yard, and Don Southern didn't like the spot at all, but the Birmingham offense comes on the field. That's a big stop by that Barracuda defense. And just when Hamilton had a little bit of momentum on the third down gamble, just a good surge. We've talked about it before, how when you get a short yardage situation, it's who gets the lowest. That time it was Birmingham, and Cavillo had nowhere to go. First and 10 from the 49-yard line. Here comes Dunnigan. Dunnigan looking over the middle. He's got a man wide open. Guess who? Marcus Grant all the way down to the 35-yard line. And Grant, who's having a huge evening, has a pickup of 25 yards. Well, there's a combination of things that happen in this play. But really, it's Dunnigan's time to start things off. He drops back in there. He's got all time of day. And when you're playing his own defense and you give your quarterback that much time, receivers are going to get open. You just can't cover all the areas in the field for that long. And that's exactly what happened. Marcus Grant, six catches, 152 yards, and two touchdowns. Just walked the ball to 36. Lots of early movement there. Michael Philbrook of Carleton University jumped offside. There's flags everywhere. And he's claiming, as all defensive players do, that he was drawn off. And guess what? This time he was. Yeah, I think it was, procedure. I think it was big Fred Childress. But Make a procedure. Birmingham, number 62, five-yard penalty, still first down. Fred Childress, 6'4", 340 pounds. You know what? <laughs> That's being generous. Yeah, and you know, when he gets that momentum just a little bit forward, he's <laughs> offside. Forget it. He's not stopping that momentum. His shadow weighs 60 pounds. <laughs> Here's Dunnigan over the middle. Has a man, Ted Long, and Long has a first down all the way down to the Hamilton 21-yard line, a pickup of 20 yards. So give them a penalty, they'll just get an extra 10 yards. Yeah, and Matt Dunnigan doing a great job right now, but it's largely due to the fact that he's got so much time. When you're playing a zone defense like Hamilton is in this case, and you drop back and you have that much time and that much field division downfield, it's not too hard to find an open receiver, and you just can't cover all the zones. You got to get some more pressure on the quarterback. First and 10 from the 22-yard line. Dunnigan's in the shotgun. Lots of time. Dunnigan throws it down low inside the 10-yard line. Might be a late hit there as Marcus Grant got belted when he was on the ground, but the flags do not fly. He does have a first down at 
the Hamilton nine yard line. The crowd hollering for a penalty. You talk about Marcus Grant. Now he's a rookie receiver in this league working with Matt Dunham, of course the veteran, but you, you think that a rookie receiver would get open in the man to man situations because that's basically just athletic ability. But Marcus Grant is also getting open in these zone situations and that's reading defenses and knowing where your quarterback's thinking. Good communication and good job by a rookie receiver. The snap rolls back to Dunning and he's in trouble but he gets it away. And Woodside gets all the way down to the two yard line. A bad snap, a big rush, but this Birmingham offense is able to turn it into a game of seven. safety valve throughout this game and every time Dunnigan seems to get into a little bit of trouble Woodside tries to find a little opening for him so he can dump the ball off and picks up a nice gain there gets a bit of a dribble a dribble pass back to him and gets the pressure but there's Woodside little safety relief pass six receptions for 55 yards for Woodside second and goal from the two Dunnigan from the shotgun flags are down pass right to the goal line Ted Long is spotted down right at the six-inch line. <laughs> and that's the second time that's happened. It was that same spot, in fact, the same official who said Dunningham didn't get in in the first quarter. Uh, he's going to make sure they're across the line when they get in. Well, let's see what the penalty is first. Jack Pardee wants to know more than anyone. Offside, Hamilton, Whoa. number two. First down, Birmingham. Yikes, Eric Carter offside. First and goal from the one. Well, you know, sometimes when things start going bad in a football game, it just snowballs, and it really has for Hamilton. Penalties, turnovers, it's problems for Don Southern tonight. That's a defensive back who goes offside on a goal line play. But what happens sometimes in those plays, they're trying to play bump and run coverage, and they sneak up too close to the receiver. 15 penalties for 136 yards. Dunnigan from the shotgun on first and goal from the one. To the end zone and incomplete. He was looking there for a diving Delius Morris, but the pass was a little too far. And so it'll bring up second and goal from the one. How about that from the shotgun on first and goal from the one? <laughs> <laughs> this guy is an aggressive quarterback. He loves to put the ball in the air, and if he could throw a 60-yard touchdown from the one, he'd try it. <laughs> Unfortunately, in this field, he can't do it. Now, second and goal from the one. And Dunnigan, this time, will line up under center. Dunnigan has time. End zone, touchdown. Jason Phillips. Phillips, who had a 96-yard touchdown reception in his first CFL game, has his second touchdown reception tonight. And Dunny gets getting the man-to-man -man defense, so he gets the pick, and he almost tripped a little bit, but when things are going good, they're going good, and Dunny can get the ball out there anyway. And this man couldn't be happier. Art Williams, the owner of the Birmingham Barracudas, his team is rolling on the scoreboard, and there's more than 30,000 people in the house tonight. The attendance, just over 31,000. And that's great news for the owner of the Birmingham franchise. The point after by Franco Grilla is good. There's a flag down on the play. And if the convert stands, it'll be 49-14 for Birmingham. The penalty is against Hamilton. It will be declined. And yes, the owner of the Cuda is a happy guy. Play Vacation Sweepstakes at Mr. Grocer and Value Mart. You could win one of 100 trips for two to the luxurious Oakwood and Resort in Grand Bend, Ontario. Enjoy deluxe accommodations, golf, tennis, and swimming facilities. You could also win the Massage and Home Haircutting Kit from Wall, Masters of Massage and Home Hair Care, or Samsonite's Valet Carry-On. Samsonite, our strengths are legendary. To enter, fill out a ballot and attach a proof of purchase from any one of these President's Choice featured products. Vacation Sweepstakes, only at Mr. Grocer and Value Mart. been a long trip, son. How about throwing me a cold one? Just like old times, huh, Dad? Just like the old days. 
This isn't a Pepsi. I know. I saved nine cents. Unbelievable. Kids saved a lousy nine cents. 49-14 is the score in favor of Birmingham. Stay tuned at the conclusion of this game for the TSN Turning Point, brought to you by Royal LePage, the real estate professionals that make the difference. Aim higher with Royal LePage. Dunnigan has passed for four touchdowns and 348 yards in his first game as the quarterback of the Birmingham Barracudas. I think they're going to like this guy. <laughs> you think he's impressed the 30,000 fans, 30,000 plus fans here in Birmingham? Oh, I would think so. <laughs> Here's Kelvin Means from the one. Means gets outside, has some room, and Means finally tripped up. Up around the 40-yard line, a 74-yard kickoff, a return of 37. Darren, what's going on in San Antonio? What? Great football game. It was 25-23 when Carlos Huerta would step up and hit a 48-yarder. That pads the lead. That makes it 28-23, to late in the fourth quarter, about two and a half minutes to go. Guess what? The Stallions have the ball back again. Anthony Cavillo is back in for the Hamilton Ticats. And it has been a devastating night for the Tabbies. Guns it over the middle here. And ooh, and Frank Merrill take a whack from Anthony Drawhorn at the end of that play. And Drawhorn will be called for a late hit on Merrill after a gain of 26 yards. And Draw's arguing. Well, I don't know what he's arguing about. He was. He was way late on the hit, but, you know, Anthony Drawhorn isn't a safety. Birmingham, number seven, 15-yard penalty from point ball. First down, Hamilton. Good cover guy. He's a, he's a great cover guy. He's played halfback all his career, and now he's playing free safety for Birmingham. He sees the catch, and he thinks, Ooh. well, let me get involved. I'll take three, four, five steps up there and then throw the hit in. <laughs> Ooh. Nine and a half minutes to play in the fourth quarter. The penalty moves the Ticats down to the 37-yard line. Cavill over the middle, almost had it intercepted. As he was looking over the middle, it was very nearly picked off by number 24, Tommy Orr, the man from West Virginia. Yeah, Tommy Orr thought <laughs> he had that one. That one was right in the hands, and he's shaking his head thinking, I got to work more on the bulges with the receivers. Cavill's just going to drop back, take five steps, and look off, and then look back into the middle for Knight, where he's hit a couple of times tonight for big gains, but Orr stepped in front of that one, just dropped it. On second down, Cavill gets it to the near side and completes a Manny Hazard. Hazard is close to another first down as he's brought down at the 27-yard line. Under nine minutes to play now here in the fourth quarter. We see some flashes of lightning around. Glenn following <laughs> us around. Man. It is. Every game so far this year, we have uh, we have had lightning and thunder. and we, yeah, There we are at Legion Field here in Birmingham. And uh, what a beautiful facility. And uh, I think, you know, the all-time punt return record in this stadium is held by a guy from Alabama. Gump, I think, was his name. <laughs> some guy named Gump. Would I that be Forrest? I think he had like a hundred yard returns every time. <laughs> By the way, that, that movie had a little bit to do with saving the Thai Cats, believe it or not. Martin Short, the actor and Thai Cat fan, got Tom Hanks to autograph a Forrest Gump poster. And it sold in a charity auction to raise money for the Thai Cats. And it got 2,500 bucks. I heard Martin Short was a big fan of the CFL. There That's great. A tabby fan to boot. What not to like? And I know there's 31,000 fans in here that are liking it. I know one guy who doesn't. Not tonight. Hall of Famer Don Southern. Probably not a big fan of what's going on tonight. This game can't end soon enough for him. Third and a yard from the one. And Cavillo swings it out to Lee Knight. And Knight with another big gain inside the 15, the 10. Pretty good. That was a great run by Lee Knight. I mean, it's, it's great to 
to see. I mean, the Hamilton Tie Cats haven't got, haven't had things go their way in this football game. They've had a lot of drop passes, but Knight's going to get the rub and get out in the open and the flat for Cavillo, and then he does it all himself. And it's it's great to see with eight minutes left. They they're still working hard. They're still trying to get some points on the board. I mean, this game is almost out of reach for him, but he's still playing good, hard football and getting in the end zone. Nice play by Rick by Knight. Lee Knight this season has nine catches for 199 yards. He's averaging 22 yards a reception. And as a fullback, he hasn't rushed for a yard yet. I know, he hasn't had a carry. Isn't that <laughs> unbelievable? <laughs> but hey, if he's, if he's catching the ball like that, why not, why not just throw it to him? Like, look at Lee Knight last year, a 7.9 yard average for reception. He's tripled it this year. We'll take a look at it again. Here's here comes Lee Knight. What is he going to do? He's just going to go out in the flat, and he's going to get the rub from his wide receiver coming in this way. That's that's why he gets open. They're man-to-man -man defense. Receivers are coming in, gets a little bit of the rub. Linebacker can't get out there, and then it's the foot race to the end zone. And for the big fullback, a nice job to keep his feet there, and then up and over, and just stretch that ball over the line for the touchdown. How good is that? That's something else. That takes, a, that takes a little few steps to get that big body in motion. <laughs> and again, I see three big guys. Michael O'Shea, we saw Mike James from Birmingham, and now Big Lee Knight gets some serious air time and some jumping ability here. And it looks like the Hamilton Ticats will again go for the two-point conversion, which would once again cut the lead to a mere 28 points. Yeah. Well, I mean, they're Actually, still working sorry to, hard. Sorry, to make that. Yeah, 28. Points. Yeah, but I mean, Hamilton's still working hard. I mean, it'd be easy for Hamilton to give up in this case, but they're still battling. And it is warm down on the field. Let me tell you, these guys. <laughs> the one end of the bench is empty where the fan isn't. <laughs> Two-point conversion, Chai. They throw it underneath, and Kalen Hall is stuffed short. Stopped on the play, and he can't get ahead as he was thrown down by Jimmy Reed. So the two-point conversion fails. 29-point Birmingham lead. Twenty-foot baskets. Three hundred-point games. 100-yard courts. In the future, athletes will make the game faster, farther, tougher. But today's athlete can choose new all-sport. Fluid replacement. Unsurpassed taste. Four thirst-quenching flavors. All-sport is a body quencher. So before it gets to this, new all-sport. The game will never be the same. And Mr. Sub, first thinking is what we are. something you wrap it up you want to protect it you wrap it up so you want to protect it wrap it up fourth quarter in Birmingham with the Barracudas leading the Ticats 49 to 20 8 21 to play here in the fourth and the Ticats to kick it off after the Lee Knight touchdown could we see another onside Oh, it's Osbaldiston, so it must be onside. Alyssa kicks it deep. Osbaldiston puts it a mile in the air, and this time it's captured by the Barracudas as they sky up to grab it, and this time there was no fooling Birmingham. Four plays, 72 yards, and Lee Knight with a 28-yard pass and run up and over touchdown for the Hamilton Ticats. And we've got a new quarterback into the game. As Lee Knight says hello to all the folks in Burlington, his hometown, a former Burlington Jr. 
And we've got the new quarterback now for the Birmingham Barracudas. It's 23-year-old Jimmy Klingler out of the University of Houston, like his brother David, the quarterback for the Cincinnati Bengals. And on first down, Klingler guns it, and it's incomplete. Klingler had a couple of good games for the Birmingham Barracudas, starting in place of Matt Duddingen, who was injured. He led his team to a victory in Winnipeg. Just under 50% for three touchdowns and 349 yards in two games. And his brother David was down, actually, during training camp and worked out a little bit with the Birmingham Barracudas to get ready for his training camp with the Bengals. Both David and Jimmy worked in the run-and-shoot offense at the University of Houston. And Klingler guns it over the middle and right over the head of his intended target, Marcus Granton. Grant never tried for that one. I was worried about getting hit. I don't know what happened there. I don't know if he was worried about getting hit or he didn't think that that was the football coming at him or something. He looked like he ducked when it came towards him. I, maybe he's got some sort of deal with Matt Dunnigan. And he says, oh, sorry, I only catch Matt's passes. But that was the ball that it looked like Marcus Grant just ducked when that one came to him. It was the same pass that Dunnigan was throwing to him in that hole, but I, he, he obviously didn't see it. Scott Player is back to punt now for Birmingham. Here comes the rush. And Player gets a good kick away. This is Rogers from the eight. And Rogers still at the eight. Is dropped right there. He ran about 40 yards. And he got nowhere. As Mr. Orr is pleased to tell the world. It's 49-20 for Matt Dunnigan. Eric Cooper. We have the gamut of bicycles from children's bicycle right up to a uh, mountain bike to a uh, racing bike. Our product obviously makes it special. We have a dynamite product. I use the Advantage account codes to be cost efficient. With Advantage, I get one invoice per month. It's broken down exactly the way I want it by territory, uh, across Canada, by rep. The Advantage codes make my life very easy. I mean, it makes it easier for my budget. Being cost conscious is very important to every business in this day and age. Decision. Rest, crunch. You can't beat that. McCain Super Fries is where it's at. Great tasting, crispy McCain Super Fries are prepared with 100% non hydrogenated canola oil. So they contain just half a gram of saturated fat per serving. More than that, they taste just great. So get the facts there on the pack. McCain Super Fries, low in saturated fats for a healthy decision. Now you can't beat that. Welcome back to Birmingham, where Matt Dunnigan's had a nice return to the Canadian Football League. He's thrown for four touchdowns. Marcus Grant has got a couple of them. The Ticats have turned the ball over five times. We talked about Kalen Hawley has just 24 yards in offense in this game. He came into the game leading the Canadian Football League in yards from the line of scrimmage. Well, coming up in a couple of minutes here on TSN, it's Blue Jays baseball as the Blue Jays are out in Seattle, and tonight they'll face the big unit. Six foot ten, Randy Johnson. You heard Darren mention earlier in the telecast, 40 strikeouts in his last 40 games. It's like it's like goofy pitching. It's all arms and legs. The last thing you see is the ball. And the big unit can heat it up. It's like goofy pitching. <laughs> I don't think Randy subscribes to TSN. No. I'm not worried about it. First down from the seven, Cavill. He's up and gunning, and it is incomplete. He was looking over there for number 83, Kelvin Means, but the pass was broken up by Tommy Orr. Not a lot of passes thrown out towards Kelvin Means, and uh, Tommy Orr got a little bit turned around and crossed up, but used his athletic ability to recover and just get back in time to deflect that pass from Cavill. And a lot of the fans here, the more than 31,000 are starting to file out. They've had enough heat for the night from the Barracudas and from the Birmingham night. Heading for some air conditioning. Oh, you bet. <laughs> Second down from the seven. And the pass is complete up there to Manny Hazard. Hazard looks to be stopped about a yard short of a Hamilton first down. And now it's third and a long one. And I think Don Southern, after having Cavill way up, wave off the punting team a couple times, will likely send out Hank Alisic and the punting unit. Yeah, you don't want to make it any worse in this case than it already is. Punted out there and 
Wanted to mention we were talking about the heat and humidity here in Birmingham. Natalie Way was a young lady who worked in Toronto for the Canadian Football League. She took a job here in Birmingham. She bought a car when she got down here. A black car that does not have air conditioning. <laughs> She's trying to trade it in, but she says right now she can't give it away. A car without air conditioning here? I am not surprised she can't give it away. Might be in flames in the parking lot right now. <laughs> and Hank Alisic back at his three-yard line to punt. And Hank's yelling for a snap, and they're running out of time. And Hank's going to give up a safety. I don't think they had enough players on the field. I, don't, I think Hamill only had 11 guys on the field, so Hank surrenders the safety instead of punting it away. And with the score 49 to 20, that'll make it 51 to 20, and the Barracudas have gone over 50 for the first time in franchise history. Yeah, I think that was something that Hank decided to do as an on his own. He saw that he was short a man. There was only 11 on the field for Hamilton, and rather than have one come back, because usually that's all it takes to have one guy not be in his assignment, decided to take the two points. 5.49 to play here in the fourth quarter. 51 to 20 is the score for the Birmingham Barracudas. And don't forget, playing in San Antonio tonight, the Texans and the Baltimore Stallions. And the game will keep you updated on. Ken Lazarus has a call for us. The two-point safety for Birmingham. They have elected to take the option of scrimmaging the ball. First down on their own 35. Thanks for that, Ken. We've got a football 101 with Ken Lazarus tonight, <laughs> giving us detailed explanation. Yeah, and I think you know Birmingham wants to see uh, Jimmy uh, Jimmy Klinger get a little more a little more experience in there, throw the ball a little bit. You know, in his in his season so far, he's had two long touchdown passes, one for 96 yards, one for 86. And Angelo Snipes on fan appreciation day in Birmingham. <laughs> And not fans in the stand, let me tell you. <laughs> it's electric fan appreciation day in Birmingham. Well put. Klingler from the 15. Gives it out there to Donald Moffat. And Moffat gets out across the 40 to the 42-yard line with five and a half and counting to play in the fourth quarter. We we're talking about some small receivers for Birmingham, but some guys have made some big plays. Marcus Grant, 5'9", 176. Donald Moffitt, who just carried that one, he's only 5'9", 176. They got some little guys that can just fly. Fred Childress is bigger than two of the Birmingham wide receivers put together. <laughs> Klingler swings it out to the near side for Delius Morris, and Morris should have a first down as he gets up to the 49-yard line. And Jack Carney adapting to the Canadian Football League. If there was a former NFL coach who was well-suited to the CFL, it's got to be Pardee, who's long been an advocate of the run and shoot, the, the red gun, the spread offense, whatever you want to call it. And really, what, the key to what you just said was the spread offense, and we saw a lot of that from Dunnigan. It basically is the run and shoot. Spread everyone out, use the whole field, find the holes, and get the matchups. Here's Klingler just slinging it out there. What a throw as he gets it up to the 45-yard line, but the pass fell incomplete. As he was looking over there for Derek Crawford, who was triple covered, but Klingler just kind of ran out there and threw that thing like a rock. That was a really good throw because he was rolling pretty hard to his left, and he had to throw it back across his body into that post pattern to Crawford. And it's a nice throw. Crawford just dropped it. He's nursing a, a sore hamstring. Now on second and ten from the 47. Klingler loves to throw it deep and this time has to take it short. And Mike O'Shea absolutely lowered the boom on Ted Law. Oh man, Mike O'Shea has been a bright light in a bad evening for Hamilton. He sure has. Rookie of the year in 1993. And watch this. Listen to this hit by Mike O'Shea. hear that one all the way up here and we were up here quite a, we're up here quite a ways Michael Shea's not quitting 106 tackles last year he's got a lot of pride out there and still playing good hard-nosed football Scott Blair back out there to punt do you miss the sound of uh, all those big hits down there no <laughs> I'm glad I'm up here <laughs> that's one of the reasons you retire nice snap for player a good kick up by Andrew. 
Andrew Grigg, and Grigg gets ridden out of bounds up by the 19-yard line. We understand there's been an unfortunate incident down in San Antonio. Darren Tishon has more on that. Thanks very much, Gord. Indeed, it was scary in San Antonio. Josh Miller, the punter for the Baltimore Stallions. The snap was there. He loses control, tries to kick it on the ground. He gets dumped, comes directly down on his head. He laid on the field for about five to 10 minutes. So they brought out the gurney. They made sure, took every precaution. They were hauling him off the field. He was moving his arms and his hands. Hopefully, he will be all right. We think it's precautionary measures. Covillo has that pass batted up in the air. Defense has been pretty solid as well. Yeah, real impressed with their rookie secondary and their ability to cover man-to-man, -man, and they've got constant pressure on Anthony Cavillo. You know, he's doing pretty well standing in there and taking some big hits, and a lot of times those aren't recorded. You know, they're not recorded as sacks, but they're called pressures, and they, they work just the same. Cavillo, 26 of 46 tonight. Pressure coming again and again. They got the hand up on that ball, and Cavillo has the pass knocked away. That time, it was deflected away by number 56, Shante Peoples. So a couple of former Las Vegas stars meet in the backfield, and Shante Peoples, a former teammate of Anthony Cavillo, gets his hand on that pass. We're at the three-minute warning. 51-20 to 20 is the score for Birmingham. On the night, the curtain went up on the Barracudas at home. Citizens living in the grip of fear. A justice system littered with criminals. The evil underworld of the city infesting the streets. It's time to take out the trash. In Sega's Adventures of Batman and Robin video game, vile villains are bent on trashing Gotham City. Fight through incredible 3D animation as Batman or Robin, or team up against the Joker and other vermin. The Adventures of Batman and Robin. Over its 114-year history, the legends of the sport have won it. Now, the best in the world want to win it. Be part of history. Be part of the Des Moines Limited Open, Canada's International Tennis Championship. July 24th on TSN. Welcome back to Bama, where former Ottawa Rough Rider therapist Jerry Kurlowich is working on Derek Greer, Curley, who got his start in Edmonton. He's now moved down to Southern Ontario to work for the Hamilton Ticats, and Derek Greer is one of the players trying to stretch it out. That's tough tonight because it is a wet one tonight. Yeah, it's really surprising that we haven't seen more of this, actually. These are just cramps and trying to keep stretched out. And been awfully hot and awfully humid here in the south. And Hank Alisic, who surrendered to safety the last time he went back to punt, and that put Birmingham over the 50-point mark. Hank's had a couple of tackles tonight, too, so he's going to have a few bruises. That's right. <laughs> Not like Hank's getting any younger. The man's 35 years old. <laughs> All these kids don't show him any respect, do they? This time, Hank will kick it away. Another low driving kick. Draw horn from the 42. Couldn't get around the first man who got down there to make the stop. It's Rob Hitchcock, number 42. Special teams player forced him back inside. 2.34 to play here in the fourth quarter. And it's been a great night for Mark Ledbetter and the Birmingham Barracuda. Yeah, constant pressure by that front four, led by Ledbetter and Shante Peoples. And uh, Ledbetter coming over from Sacramento, where he had four sacks last year and a real force for that Sacramento pass rush. And now, Klingel got a chance to get some work in. Of course, he started the first two games with the Birmingham Barracudas, and he learns from a pretty good one in Matt Dunnigan. And Klingler's going to keep throwing. Flags are down, and Klingler almost had it intercepted, and now it is. It bounced up in the air, and it's picked off by Sam Rogers. And Rogers has Klingler to beat, but Klingler forces him out of bounds at the 27-yard line. What a play. That ball bounced way up high in the air. There are flags down, but the initial indication is procedure against the Birmingham Barracudas, so this interception, interception rather, should stand. Yeah, it looked like it was procedure. 
League of Procedure, Birmingham, declined. First down, Hamilton. So the Tabbies will take advantage of a late defensive break. That pass was bumped up in the air by Stephon Adams, and then Sam Rogers was there to haul it in on the deflection. Yeah, it's Rogers is happy with the interception, but the Stephon Adams is sure disappointed because this one went straight through his hands. He really should have been his interception. He broke on the ball nicely, came underneath, and it just hit his hit his shoulder pads and bounced straight up. And you know, he's he's following after his Hamilton teammate receivers who have had a few balls bounce off their shoulder pads tonight. 224 to play in the fourth quarter. If you're just joining us or looking for Blue Jays baseball, it's coming up next from Seattle. And now Cavillo. Out to the near sideline, gets it to Manny Hazard. He's trying to dive ahead and get a first down. And as he did dive ahead, he got whacked by Byron Brooks. So he paid dearly for that extra yard. And you saw Manny Hazard fighting earlier in the game for that extra yard and a third down gamble and actually lost the football. Sometimes better just to get down and reset the sticks and start again. <laughs> Seven catches for 57 yards for Manny Hazard. On a tough night for the Tabbies, who look destined to suffer their first loss of the season. They'll drop to two and one, while Birmingham will improve to two and one. Now Cavillo throws it underneath and has his man down at the five yard line as he gets it there to Kelvin Means. And Means didn't like the late shot he took. He gave a shove on the way back. It's a pickup of 18 yards and a Hamilton first down at the five yard line with two minutes to play now in the fourth quarter. Hamilton still throwing the ball in there. You know they want to work on things. This game's out of reach, but they want to keep working on their offense and work on different patterns, different timing with their receivers and build on it for next week. Now Cavillo from the five, corner of the end zone, and it is a touchdown to Kelvin Means. And Kelvin Means, in his second year, gets his first touchdown of the season. And so the Hamilton Ticats make it a little more respectable as the score now stands at 51-26. Yeah, Gordon, we were talking about the timing, and this is just nothing but a little work to keep make sure we keep working on our timing, and it's called a throwback, a throw behind. Calvin Means runs the fade, and then the ball is thrown before he actually turns around. Defensive back has no chance. And now the try for the two-point conversion. Cavillo into the end zone, and Frank Maroff has it working on Anthony Drawhorn, so they make the two-point conversion and make the score 51 to 28 in favor of the Birmingham Barracudas. And while we have a moment, we'll take time to do some business. It's time now for the TSN Turning Point brought to you by Royal LePage. And it came in the second quarter. Marcus Grant in a three deep zone defense. Now you should never be beat deep when you're playing three deep zone. But Grant turns on the burners straight down the sideline for a 72 yard touchdown in which Matt Dunningham threw a perfect pass. And that was one of many big plays for the Barracudas. And that is tonight's TSN turning point. A cash donation will be made to the Coaching Association of Canada for the training and development of Canadian coaches in amateur sport. On behalf of TSN and Royal LePage, the real estate professionals that make the difference aim higher with Royal LePage. Marcus Grant with a big night, seven catches for 165 yards and a couple of touchdowns in his first game at home with his Birmingham Barracuda. So now 145 to play, and the score stands at 51-28 in favor of the Birmingham Barracudas. And when you look like Matt Dunnigan, what else are you going to be but a quarterback, huh? <laughs> Movie star. Hey, and you know, Matt Dunnigan is a strong individual. That guy can bench press the gym. He's very strong, and you can tell when he throws those darts 40, 50 yards down the field. He's, he's seen a few weights in his time. Wouldn't be a season, or wouldn't be an offseason without surgery for Matt Dunnigan. It seemed like every year he was going in for something. And here comes those balls, and again, they fake the short kickoff. Flags are down. It looked to be illegal procedure. Anthony Drawhorn from his five, and Drawhorn gets out to the 19-yard line before he's stopped by Roger Henning. 51-28 is the score here. Let's go back to Darren Petition. Hey, thanks very much, Gord. Coming up, following tonight's football game, we will take you to Seattle 
To watch the big unit in the action, the Toronto Blue Jays are in town. Pat Henkin will get the start for the Jays. He's 6-6 six six in the year with a 5.96 ERA. Toronto's won 5-7. We'll see how they do against Johnson tonight, once again following the football game. Randy Johnson, who throws aspirins, they say. But I know you had to, you had to tough hit enough to hit. And it's been yeah, wanted, tough to, to, to hit to lately in Major League Baseball. We had a no-hitter pitch last night for the Dodgers. And all of a sudden, the pitchers who got knocked around in the first half of the season might be getting their revenge after the All-Star break. 138 to play here in the fourth quarter. Jimmy Klingler on in relief of Matt Donegan, who had a superlative Birmingham Barracuda's debut. Now we've got a fumble and jumping on the football for the Ticats. Looks to be number 99, Michael Philbrook, and he has the fumble. And so the Tabbies have forced another turnover. I believe it was Donald Moffat, number 19, who dropped the ball. And they may be calling incomplete pass here in second down. Yeah, I, I, this one sort of looked from the first angle that it was incomplete, but... Ooh, that's good. Oh, no, that's a catch. He caught the ball, turned around, and headed upfield, and after taking the hit, dropped the ball. So definitely Hamilton ball. Chance to save a little more face for the Ticats. But no, no, they call it incomplete. They do call it incomplete. After a conference, they decide the catch was not made. And now on second down, Klingler running for his life. Not quite as agile as Matt Dunnigan, and no one near the ball as he bounced it out at the sideline. Darren, what was the final down in Alamo Town? It was 28 to 23. Late in the contest, David Archer throws up a prayer. But forget it. Not a chance. Last play of the game. The Baltimore Stallions win 28-23. Now sitting in sole possession of first place in the South until the Birmingham game is over. Yeah, Baltimore moves to two and one on the season. Birmingham is a minute and 29 seconds away from doing the same thing. The Memphis Mad Dogs got their first win of the season last night as the Saskatchewan Rough Riders dropped to 0 and 3 on the year. I'd like to see the Regina papers today. Yeah, it's going to be uh, tough to be there the next little while. Here's Rogers now from the 45. Rogers trying to get outside, does, and then just gets collared as he is dragged down by a number 86, Ted Long, and now a little pushing and shoving breaks out late. A minute and seven to play in the fourth quarter. And it's been all Birmingham Barracudas at Legion Field in Birmingham, Alabama tonight. You know, Gord, it was all it was all Hamilton in Hamilton last week when these two teams played, and it's awfully hard to win when you play the same team the same the, the next week. So, and then you get and then you bring Matt Dunnigan back as well. That's insurmountable odds. That's, that's a tall order. <laughs> now Cavillo from the shotgun. Cavillo just gets it away, completes it to Manny Hazard, and Hazard jumps out of bounds at the 47. One thing that surprised observers in the U.S. is the number of back-to-back -back games in the CFL, something you don't see very often in U.S. football. Yeah, and you'll probably see a lot less of it with the realignment. Of course, now there's the North and the South division, so, you know, when it was East-West, we often saw the same team three times during the season, but now with the new teams in the league and... The two new divisions, it'll happen a little bit less. One thing they'd like here is more games against Memphis. The Barracudas beat the Mad Dogs only once. Now Frank Merrill wide open down at the 25-yard line. He dropped the ball. Yeah, and there's been some big-time hitting going on out there and uh, some big hits by that Barracuda defense. And that sometimes will result in the odd drop pass from lack of concentration on a receiver. And Merrill just saw, thought that the hit was coming and let that one slip through his fingers. 52 seconds to play now in the fourth quarter. And coming up in a few moments, we'll take you out to Seattle and Blue Jays baseball. Blue Jays and the Seattle Mariners. A chance to see Randy Johnson. Cavillo fires it over the middle, and again, it's incomplete for Merrill. That time he went up hard for it, and he paid the price. He got nailed by Cleveland Coulter, and Fernando Thomas injured on the play. For the Birmingham Barracudas, he went down in a hurry in a collision with those two players. Yeah, and right after that last play, Frank Maroff went up and after that seam pattern.